If you play with a fire burning inside you. If you push harder. If you play faster. If your goal is domination. If you look at me not as someone to emulate. But someone to one day eclipse. Then I, I designed, designed this racket, racket for you. you. And I hope it takes you as far as it's taken me. Five-time national champion head coach Nick Saban arriving for the home opener in Tuscaloosa. Fresh off that statement win over USC and bringing in the quarterbacking duo of Jalen Hurts and Blake Barnett. On a very hot and steamy day in T-Town, we get set for the Tide and the Toppers. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Brian Denny Stadium with over 100,000 on hand as we get set for the SEC champion Crimson Tide and the Conference USA champs from a year ago, Western Kentucky. Both of them showing up 1-0 on the season with impressive wins a week ago as the Tide gets set to take the field. to Tuscaloosa. I'm Beth Mowens along with NFL veteran Anthony Becht as we get set to roll out at least a couple of quarterbacks today for Alabama. A little bit of a mystery about who's going to start here in just a minute but Nick Saban assured us Anthony yesterday in meetings we're going to see plenty of Jalen Hurts and Blake Barnett. Two quarterbacks that play above their years and when you watch the film from last week they both bring a certain skill set that's dangerous. Jalen Hurts an elusive out of the pocket passer who's got a cannon for an arm rips a big one down the sidelines to Artavius Stort for the big touchdown and Blake Barnett to me is a pure pocket passer clearly has a grasp for the passing game watch how he gets his vision all the way to the right he's going to pull that middle safety way over and he's going to come back to the big tight end OJ Howard for the nice throw and catch two combinations of quarterbacks nice problem for Nick Saban to have and they are under the guidance of their offensive coordinator, Lane Kiffin, a group that lit up USC for 52 points last week. But right now our field analyst, Rocky Boyman, he's ready to talk about the Alabama D, the Hill uh, Hilltoppers attack, and a couple of stars to watch. On an Alabama defense full of superstars, the defensive end, Jonathan Allen, stands out. Yes, he's athletic. Yes, he's big, but it's his technique and his tenacity that sets him apart. Now, for Western Kentucky on offense, their wide receiver, number two, Taewon Taylor. Nick Saban told us in the meeting yesterday that Taylor may be the best wide receiver they face all season. A true burner. The key for him, they got to move him around outside, inside, find him creative ways to get the football. Programs with championship pedigrees set to kick it off in Tuscaloosa, Western Kentucky and Alabama coming up. Be ready for 60 minutes now. 60 minutes. All out street fight between the whistles. Street fight between the whistles. Okay? That's how hard you gotta play. It's gotta be a street fight between the whistles. Oh, oh. I said a street fight between the Jeff Brom getting Western Kentucky ready to go today in Tuscaloosa. The former Louisville quarterback, you may have seen what his mentor Bobby Petrino and the Cards did to Syracuse last night. Well, the Tops, they'd like to put on a similar show, maybe a bit more challenging here this afternoon against number one Alabama. Saban and the Tide, 20 straight wins over opponents from outside the Power Five. Western Kentucky won the toss, and they want the football right away. Kylan Towner, the junior from Mobile, Alabama, is the deep man. 
as Adam Griffith gets set to boot it away. The toppers in all white sporting those new white helmets this afternoon, and Towner loses the football, and I believe Western Kentucky was able to hop on it at the 23. A big hit from Minka Fitzpatrick. As they unpile things, Western Kentucky says they will keep it. And they have indeed recovered the fumble. Minka Fitzpatrick, number 29. He's the corner for this football team. He's going to hit you. And you see a lot of starters, Starborough, a lot of players on special teams for Nick Saban. That's what it's about. He wants those kind of caliber players playing. As we bring out Mike White, who debuted at quarterback last week with the only 500-yard passing game in the country. And, Anthony, he steps into an offense that was third in the nation in scoring a year ago. Well, this offensive line has to protect him today. They want to get the ball out of his hands quickly. They like to strike down the field. Eight plays over 25 yards last week. But I don't know if he'll have the time against this defense. Against the four-man rush, White down the far sideline looking for Taewon Taylor. They are looking uh, for Taylor to be their big playmaker today. And you mentioned the offensive line. It's the second most experienced in the country in front of White. It is, but they're playing against the best defensive line in Alabama. And you saw Taewon Taylor. They're going the outside. They're going to try to target him 15 to 20 times in this game. On the outside, they're also going to move him around to get him the short passes. On second down, the receiver screen. This is Taylor. They want to get the ball in his hands as much as possible. They love to run at what they call warp speed, but they say they're going to be more selective on their tempo today. But they're an offense that will get up to the line of scrimmage. They'll get set, and they'll survey the land. The defense of what Alabama's bringing. He'll get a check from the coach on the sideline, a run pass option, and they'll try to beat this Alabama team on defense with the plays from the sideline. On third down and four, White trying to buy some more time, and he runs out of it in the grasp of Ryan Anderson and Jonathan Allen. And for the team that led the nation in sacks a year ago, they pick up another one early. Well, Jonathan Allen on the outside is a very dangerous passer. The protection is actually good here. Mike Smith is just rolling in the pocket. When you start getting to the outside, you've got to throw the football away. You can't take big sacks. That'll change field position on this punt. Ross of 13 on the play. Jake Collins will be punting it from inside his own five. The true freshman from Maryland, Trayvon Diggs, is back at the 40 for Alabama. Diggs backtracking to the 30, manages to stay in bounds and then is tripped up at the 31. A two-yard return, 54 yards on the boot. So here we go for the first time in 32 years. A true freshman will start at quarterback for Alabama. It's Jalen Hurts from Channel View, Texas, coming off of that four-touchdown performance last week against SC. The top dual-threat quarterback in the country coming out of high school. Elusive speed, a lot of misdirection runs. They'll have jets, uh, wide receiver jets, uh, motion across the middle, handoffs, multiple looks to try to get him outside the pocket. Tremendous game last week against USC. His first appearance here in Tuscaloosa after rushing for a couple scores, throwing for a couple scores in Arlington, Texas in the opener. And they'll get it into the hands of Calvin Ridley, the cutback at midfield, and Ridley down to the 40 of the Hilltoppers. EA Bounier is the guy that prevented the touchdown here. Jet sweep coming across just like we talked about early on trying to get the best players the football right there. Calvin Ridley's one of those guys. 28 yards on the pickup. Damian Harris who gets the call at uh, tailback this afternoon. Bulls his way down to about the 32 yard line. One of the things Lane Kiffin talked about was trying to pick up the tempo a little bit today use the 100 degree temperature down on the field to his advantage exactly right you see the speed picking up something you commonly don't see Harris gets down inside the 30 Rocky Beth, you mentioned Lane Kiffin wanting to pick up the tempo. He told us yesterday he thought that Western Kentucky's frontline players were pretty good, but they lacked depth. So the reason for the up-tempo, they won't be able to rotate those guys in and out and get them tired out. 
Now the read option, Hurts will keep, and he's wrapped up at the 26-yard line. EA Booneyway again with the tackle, and it's third down. And Nick Holt, defensive coordinator for Western Kentucky, said he's got his hands full. You don't want to load the box because they do tremendous play action pass, and you've got a dangerous quarterback that can get to the edge. They really have to have good eye discipline throughout their middle and back end defenders. Two tight ends to the left side of the line. Movement from one of those guys, Miller Forrestal, the true freshman from Georgia. Well start. Number 74 offense. Five-yard penalty. Third down. They're going to call that on Cam Robinson, the left tackle, but I thought it was the tight end that jumped the gun first. Cam is the All-America candidate, 6'6", 310, from Monroe, Louisiana. And uh, the Tide think he's as good as anybody in the country. He started every game since he's touched uh, down here in Alabama. Uh, he will be a top-tier NFL left tackle when that time presents itself. A little longer now, third and ten for Alabama. Good protection, Hurts with time. Ridley leaping to make the grab, but he was out of bounds. And it's fourth down for Alabama. They're going to bring their place kicker out. Now, one thing on that pass, Beth, nice athletic grab by Ridley. But again, two defenders were very close to Ridley. A perfect ball to get away from the defenders. But again, don't want to eyeball your wide receiver early. It looked like there. Something to watch as we move into this game with the defensive. That passing game really is a part of Hurts' game that you're going to be watching closely today, right? Absolutely. I mean, that's something that he has to work on, and Blake Barnett definitely specializes in. This will be a 49-yard attempt for the senior. And he missed it. No good. So the drive stalls for Alabama. Western Kentucky holds the line. And we remain scoreless. Early in this matchup, number one Alabama, their home opener, and a missed opportunity. Western Michigan. Oh, okay. I don't know. Good call. Good call. Wow, little action. Chris Cotter, Central Michigan, with the upset of Oklahoma State. Here it's Conference USA, Western Kentucky at number one Alabama. Of course, Nick Saban uh, amongst uh, his stops. He's a Mac guy as well. Mike. Toledo head yeah. coach in 90. Almost went undefeated, lost two games by a combined five points. Played at Kent State. As we get another look at Mike White and uh, Nick Saban looking on, he knew that they might have their hands full with this attack, at least in the first half today, the drop by Taylor. And for those of you that uh, were on social media last week, you know about how Western Kentucky literally stumbled out of the gate in their season opener. <laughs> Jeff Brom actually had them practice that this week, and look at how much cleaner it is when you travel to Tuscaloosa. I would make it a walkout for the rest <laughs> of the season and get rid of the smoke. That, that could be dangerous also. It looked like the spacing was much better, Anthony, uh, between guys as they came out of the tunnel. They, they had a lot of fun with that this week. Of course, the preparations in earnest for the kind of speed and physicality they would see against Alabama, and it's a three and out here against that tied you defense. You see the speed of the defensive line really speeding up the process of Mike White. That's six snaps now, five targets to Taylor. They're obviously trying to get him the ball, but if you don't have time at the quarterback position, hard to go vertical and find a secondary target. Jake Collins on to punt for the second time. A little more room on this effort from his own 20. It will not reach Diggs. In fact, it'll bounce outside the stripe on the sideline. Bama will have it at their own 23. Amongst the changes this week at Alabama, a new offensive assistant. More on Steve Sarkeesian when we return. ESPN.
ESPN College Football, brought to you by the strikingly designed Lexus NX Turbo and Hybrid. Some things are simply impossible to ignore. Well, one of the landmarks when you come to a game here at Alabama, it's right across the street, Ramajamas, a favorite spot for students and visitors alike. And back across the street, inside Bryant-Denny Stadium, Five former head coaches now on Nick Saban's staff as assistants. The new addition this week, Steve Sarkeesian, the former coach at Washington and at Southern Cal, who was fired last October by USC and now joining Saban's staff. The deep throw and what a catch by Ridley down at the 25. One of the things that they hope, Anthony, that Sarkeesian can work with is Hurts as a dual threat guy. You're right, and the perfect example right here, you see Calvin really throw me the ball, I beat the defender, he really did. The acrobat ability to turn his body, very nice. 51 yards on that throw. Rumbling down inside the 25, market at the 24, Bo Scarborough, the sophomore from Northport, Alabama. There is Sarkeesian. He can listen to the coaches. He, you see he's got the headset on there. He's not able to converse back with them. During the course of the week, he can break down a lot of film, and he can also talk with his very good buddy and his old friend, Lane Kiffin. Hertz will keep weaving his way down to about the 19-yard line. Well, you know, Steve Sarkeesian and Lane Kiffin together at USC, they really came in speaking the same language. And you talk about this offense, that's what they do. They can bounce ideas off. Lane was talking about how they are on the same page. Really helpful for both of these coaches. Scarborough gets it. Hall down at the 19-yard line. Alabama was looking for a face mask, I think, on the play. Omarius Bryant with the tackle. And what are you going to do here on fourth down? You've already missed a, a field goal earlier in the day. Well, this offensive line, interior three, the guards and the center, Nick's not really happy about. They really haven't had... A lot of tremendous push. They're not like the lines of the past. I don't know if they quite trust them early enough to get that push. Again, Scarborough in the game, a big masher, a pile mover, but nice job by Western Kentucky in the middle, especially number nine, Bryant, to push it back and make a nice play. Adam Griffith missed earlier from 49. This one closer, 36. Snap is down, and the kick is good. This time through the uprights for Griffith. We're able to convert on the 51-yard pass play to Ridley, but not the seven that Nick Saban wanted. Beautiful day here in Tuscaloosa. A bit on the hot side, but that hasn't kept the faithful away. 3-0. Alabama with the lead over Western Kentucky. Coming up tonight on ABC, should be a record-breaking night, a record-breaking crowd at Bristol Motor Speedway. It's the pilot Flying J battle at Bristol. Virginia Tech, 17th-ranked Tennessee. That comes up tonight at 8 Eastern on ABC as they have uh, put the football field right in the middle of the infield of the Motor Speedway. The, they are expecting to break those records that Notre Dame and Michigan set, the best attended games since World War II. And Western Kentucky will have it right around their own 20, but let's check in right now with Chris Cotter. Wow, that's a big win for Pittsburgh, an emotional one with James Conner as they have renewed that rivalry for the first time in 16 years. For Western Kentucky, their start here at Alabama, not what they had hoped for. A couple of three and outs, their yardage so far on the negative side. Anthony Wales, here's a trick play. They run the flea flicker and it works. Taewon Taylor down inside the 25 and the ball is loose. And Taylor was able to jump back on it wow. down at the nine-yard line after Marlon Humphrey jarred out of there. Talk about a favorable bounce. Listen, Jeff Brom is not afraid to do the trick plays. He's done about one. Ruling on the field is a completed pass. 
and multiple times last week in the offense. race game. Alabama knew all about it. It's just a matter of eye recognition. They be, get beat badly by Taylor Deep. 70 yards on the play to the ground here with Anthony Ace Wales. To the eight-yard line. That's Taylor trying to do a lot. He's got to hold that ball against his chest. I'll tell you, there's no way in heck he should have got that ball back. Favorable bounce. Anthony, you mentioned trick plays. They're a staple of a Jeff Brom offense. We just saw a flea flicker. Last year, they ran seven flea flickers. Five of them went for touchdowns. you got to think trick plays are going to be a big part of this game versus this Alabama defense. White with time to the end zone incomplete. Well, it has definitely uh, lit a fire under this Western Kentucky offense. And now they're looking at a third and goal. Really nice protection by the offensive line. Remember, the second most experienced offensive line in the country. They'll have their hands full. They're led by their left tackle, number 76. NFL quality tackle, probably projected to play guard in the league. But he's a big matchup versus Jonathan Allen. If he wants to make some money, Beth, this would be the game to do it. Taewon Taylor is to the bottom of the year screen. White looking the other way, throwing to the end zone, incomplete. Fired it behind Nick Norris, and it's fourth down. The kicking game for Western is not a strength. Looks like they're going to try it anyways. Last week before the game, Coach Brown watched his field goal kicker, missed three extra points in a row, and he started saying to himself, should we even kick in this football game? They made them all last week in the game. So hopefully they're better from last week. Well, he joked with us, maybe if we're around the eight-yard line, well, guess where they are right now? The eight for a 25-yard attempt. And it's good. The 70-yard flea, uh, flea flicker sets up the tying field goal. We talked about how both sides had a championship pedigree. Of course, you know all about Alabama with the 11 titles. Western Kentucky has an FCS championship as well from 2002. Let's take you back to that when they knocked off top-ranked McNeese State in the championship game. One double A, 34 to 14. Hilltoppers celebrated with their head coach, Jack Harbaugh, the paterfamilias of the Harbaugh football family. Yeah, pre definitely pretty good uh, family tree going on there with the Harbaugh family. They're all very successful coaches in the NFL and college, and the legend lives on for the Harbaugh's. And fittingly, Jeff Brown has also made this a family affair. He's uh, got his brother now on staff as one of the co-offensive coordinators. Another brother is director of ops. His dad is down on the sideline today. Diggs. Looking for a hole, gets popped around the 24. We're under eight minutes to go here in the first, all even at three apiece. That was Kylan Towner with the tackle. And you look at the Brom family, quarterback heavy. Jeff played in the NFL. His brother Brian, the co-offensive coordinator, quarterback coach, played in the NFL. And I covered Mike White at USF as a quarterback, and he was not as good as he is now. He was in a pro style there, bring him into this spread, and they've done wonders with his development as a shotgun quarterback. He also grew up with the same quarterback coach as Brandon Dowdy, who uh, rewrote all their record books, their starter the last few years, and one of the top quarterbacks in FBS last season. Big shoes for them to fill offensively. It's back to Alabama now with Jalen Hurts. And he's got his tight end, O.J. Howard, one of the heroes of the championship game from a year ago out across the 30. Yeah, O.J. Howard is a big-time tight end. Really love his game. Arguably the number one tight end in college right now. Tremendous speed, tremendous hands. They ask him to do a ton of things on the field. How about lining him up, Anthony, as a wide receiver here? A slot guy is going to block for Ridley on the receiver screen. Out of bounds around the 35-yard line. That'll move the sticks. A lot of people talk about he doesn't get the ball enough, but he's a blocker in space like you talked about. He's in flex, so it'll bring him across the motion. Uh, he does multiple things for him, and we talked about that Clemson game last year. 200 yards receiving. Pretty impressive. Put him on the map. 
Derek Dieter, the uh, grad transfer, now into the game as a receiver. He's the motion man. Hurts looking deep on first down. Stewart is wide open for the catch at the 25. And he will be hauled down around the one yard line. As Stewart got lost in coverage for 63 yards. And number 23, DeAndre Simmons, the defensive back, gets sucked down. And there's no safety help on the corner out. Beautiful throw. The protection was perfect. Or Darius Stewart just getting pulled back. But it looks like there's a flag on the play, yeah, Beth. Maybe coming all the way back. I thought it was going to be for a horse collar at the end of the play. But there is a flag all the way back near the line of scrimmage. Maybe there's a reason why the protection was so good. <laughs> yeah. And it certainly appears from the Alabama body language, their offense already running back to their own 25-yard line. Yeah, they had a holding call. We think it might be number, on Lester Cotton. Yeah, number 66 right there. Stop. There it is. Pulling down, bringing them to the ground. Again, you got to get your hands inside. You get that hand outside on the shoulder pad and pull jersey, that's going to be a flag every time. Well, Nick Saban and Lane Kiffin both talked about concerns with the three inside guys. They really like their tackles a lot. Hurts, down he goes, sacked back at the 15-yard line by Omarius Bryant, the senior out of Byram, Mississippi. This is a matchup, Omarius Bryant in the middle over the right guard, number 71, Pierce Baker. Again, he had some struggles. We talked about the center and the two guards had the most issues last week against USC. And Nick Saban talked about they have to step their game up. Anthony, you talked about the interior part of that line struggling. Remember, Alphonse Taylor served a one-game suspension last week. You got to figure we may see him at guard here soon for the Crimson Tide. Harris out to the 20. Yeah, Rocky, uh, Saban and Kiffin said possibly as much as about 50% of the snaps today for Taylor, who uh, sat out last week against USC, that suspension for an off-the-field incident over the summer. And Pierce Baker was the left tackle, or excuse me, left guard last season, so uh, when they do get Taylor back into the mix at right guard, uh, again, he was last year's starter. So it is now third and 26. The execution's been poor early on, just like last week against USC with penalties. We'll see another one here. Nick Saban's not going to be happy. Illegal substitution, 12 benefits. Off penalty, third down. I think that was Raheem Falcons who was trying to run off of the field. There's a look at the lineup with Robinson and Williams, uh, the two impressive ones. And not a lot of starts right across here from the left guard across. Cam Robinson's obviously the one that's been the staple, but they're finding new people on this line. Guys, I know Alabama wants to go fast to tire this Western Kentucky defense out, but I think right now with the miscommunication and the problems they're having, I think they've got to slow things down a bit and make sure they're on their cues. Third and long. Hurts trying to elude the pressure, and down he goes. Joel E.A. Booneyway, the sophomore from Bowling Green. His father's a professor at the school. A couple of sacks and a loss of seven. Yeah, it'll be number four, Inabunaway, right on the outside. He's going to come up and basically fight through protection. When you have a tight end on you, you have to win that. There's a back in to help, but Jalen Hurts holding the ball way too long in the pocket. And that's the difference right now. He is not a pure pocket guy. He's still learning that part of the position, and it shows there the timing. The internal timing in his head is definitely off. J.K. Scott from out of his own end zone. Nicarius Fant back for the toppers at the 40. Scott, one of the best in college football. Booms this one to Fant at the 35. Gets by the first wave and will be out close to midfield. 12 yards on the return. Chris Cotter, what you got for us? Thank you, Chris. Uh, boy, the ACC quarterbacks off to a good start, including Lamar Jackson at Louisville with 13 touchdowns responsible for now in their first two games. Francois, Florida State, yep. lighting it up last weekend today. 
So a lot a lot of depth in the ACC three very good teams. Tied at three four fifteen to play here on the first in Tuscaloosa. Another trick play. Throwing it downfield and it's read this time by Bama and it's intercepted by Ronnie Harrison. Fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, don't get fooled twice. Mac Brown used to say that a bunch. And they definitely sat back in the secondary. Beautiful play by Harrison. Just tracking eyes. There's not a lot with trick plays. You just got to stay back. Comes all the way across the field. Two defenders in the location. And it's hard to ask a wide receiver throwing a football on a reverse pass to read coverage. And number one right there, Fant. Threw a bad ball into two defenders. And now we are seeing that adjustment that we talked about at right guard. It's Alphonse Taylor, number 50. Designed run for the quarterback, Hurts. Now to about the 36 yard line. Alphonse, the fifth-year senior from Mobile, 6'5", 345 now on that right side. Yeah, suspended last week, like Rocky said. And again, I think as the season progresses, he'll roll in as the starter for this offensive line and secure a right guard spot that's been shaky early on. Oh, Scarborough now in a tailback. Good block to buy Hurts some more time. Incomplete, out of bounds. Of course, that's the other adjustment is you're also talking about one, sometimes two different quarterbacks back there, and you don't have the Heisman Trophy winner to hand off to anymore in Derrick Henry. A lot of new pieces offensively. And guys, with the protection issues you saw right there, they went to just a two-man route and protected up with everything else. And also, they brought in extra tight ends. Brandon Green, Hale Henches, along with O.J. Howard, trying to get some bigger bodies to block and get a better pocket for Jalen Hurts. They weren't real sharp in the first quarter last week. And now a third down here to try and keep the drive alive. Ridley trying to work something out on the edge. And he's got the first down yardage out to the 45. Tackled by Joe Brown after a 10-yard pickup. Hey, I mean, listen, uh, he's getting plenty of time in the pocket, so he might be seeing too much. You like to dial into a receiver, get a quick one out of your hands, let your playmakers make a play. He's obviously targeting Calvin Ridley early on, and, and he's doing a nice job winning and getting separation in his routes. Trips right as, again, they use the tight ends out wide. They're going to set up another screen. This one's for Stewart. He's got the first down. Cut down at the 35-yard line. Good blocking on the perimeter for Alabama. And there it is. O.J. Howard outside, number 88. You see him make a great block, finishing it, and that gives him. That's a pancake right there, by the way, on the outside. And Stort's got tremendous explosiveness and speed to hit that up into the field. O.J. Howard right now is showing a lot of versatility on the football field. That's why many scouts in the NFL like his game. 20 yards on that gain for Alabama. Ridley is the wide out down at the bottom of your screen. They're going to go with Stewart on the end around. Stewart breaking a tackle in the backfield, shoved out of bounds around the 28 yard line. That's going to be another first down on a steaming, muggy, Sweaty day here in Tuscaloosa. Temperatures over 100 down on the field. Well, I think the initial thought of going fast was good for both teams, but I think as we've seen some lack of execution on both sides, maybe a little bit slower pace, try to get guys lined up properly and run a little better offense for both teams. Ridley in motion and a whistle and a flag and a false start. False start. Number 50. Offense, high grade penalty, first down. That's already the fourth penalty here in the quarter on the tide. Little Lancey coming off the bench, not normally used to that. Wants to come off the ball and assert himself at the offensive line position. You got to hold your water in there as a guard, a lineman. And listen, you know, if you don't jump off sides, you do your job. Things are working out. Plenty of protection, plenty of time for hurt. A lot of things going on. 
uh, right now for this Alabama team that's not normal, a normally coached uh, Nick Saban. Eric Ridley and Stewart all to the right. Hurts looking for a seam, looking for a blocker, and he'll get inside the 30, and that's about it. Anthony, you mentioned the heat down here on the field. I can attest a little bit to that. I'm not even in pads. I'm in just a shirt, but I've already sweated through the whole thing, as you can see. A little <laughs> embarrassing, but you got to do what you got to do. Imagine these guys in full pads, full helmets, and everything in this heat. Rocky, I got to get you with my custom <laughs> T-shirt guy to hook you up right there. The best tailor in the world couldn't get me a shirt that I wouldn't oh. sweat through right now, Anthony. <laughs> Wish we had a fresh one for you at the half. Another receiver screen. This time it's to Robert Foster, and he's wrapped up right around the original line of scrimmage. It's going to be third down. It's a nice tackle on the outside. Foster, very fast, explosive receiver. They have so much depth here trying to get the ball to each of their weapons. But again, nice tackle on the outside by this Western Kentucky defense who right now holding into a field goal. Keep them out of the end zone. They like that. Don't get beat deep. They've had a few penalties go their way, but playing uh, fairly well early on. Hurts on third and ten. Throws down to the five-yard line, and it's caught. O.J. Howard, first and goal, Alabama. Well, add contested catches to his repertoire here in his resume. Again, he's late with the ball. Jalen Hurts doesn't quite get the ball out of his hands soon enough. O.J. Howard gives a defender a chance to get on him. Another 20-yard pass play. Hurts to Ridley, and he will get into the end zone for six. And they have taken a hit there at the tail end of the play. When you get to the end zone as a player, you got to protect yourself. Those defenders are right on the goal line, ready to knock in. But heck of a job by Ridley. Well, they just showed uh, the replay on the jumbo tron here. That's you heard the crowd reaction. On that hit on Ridley at the goal line as the tide rolls nine plays 67 yards in just over four minutes to grab the lead. PAT from Griffith is good. 10-3 Alabama at the end of the first. OJ Howard showing his game in the pass routes. Contested go high, hands in the air, nice way to pull it down. And then their guy today, Ridley, taking it into the end zone on the jet sweep pass. Bama touchdown. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Back here in Tuscaloosa as we get set to start the second quarter, 10 to three. Alabama has the lead right now over Western Kentucky. Griffith set to kick it away. And back deep is Kylan Towner for Western Kentucky. And he's going to take a knee. They'll bring it out to the 25. And let's talk about Jalen Hurts. Uh, some struggles in the first couple of possessions, but he really got things going in that last possession. He's now 9 for 11, 150 yards throwing. And he was 5 for 5 on that drive. A little late on his throws. He's got a ton of protection in front of him. He has to find the receivers a little earlier. But he's really been phenomenal. This is the Polaris drive recap here. And watch just him getting the ball out of his hands to his playmakers. Let them make plays. Great block by O.J. Howard on the outside. Stewart getting up the field, making a big play. And again, standing in the pocket delivering a perfectly thrown ball over defender again OJ Howard making a big play and again playmakers everywhere for Alabama really with the catch on the outside gets in for the touchdown that's what they kind of need for this offense to really flourish that is a look at the Polaris drive recap as they take it downfield and uh, put six on the board Anthony Wales there with the carry Bottom man on the pile is Jonathan Allen, the senior out of Leesburg, Virginia. 
Another guy on that defensive side for the Tide that the scouts are really looking at. A couple of sacks last week against Southern Cal. He was really focused on trying to play the run better, wants to be an every down kind of guy. Here is Anthony Wales, popped around the 35 yard line. Big hit by Ronnie Harrison, who's already got an INT today. As far as secondary is concerned, this might be the best group that the Alabama has had in quite some time. And again, you watch Ronnie Harrison coming downhill. You better find out where these guys are because they will stick you and hit you all across the board. Third down and less than one. Wales, a collision right at the line to gain with Reuben Foster. Uh, the spot will give them the first down. So Anthony Wales, who's going to have to carry a bigger load today because they will be without their bruising back. DeAndre Furby out with an injury, suffered a shoulder injury in their win last week against Rice. Got to find a way to mix it up with this offense. You can't pass it every single down. You got to keep Alabama's defense a little bit on their heels with a balance. White looking deep downfield. And incomplete intended for Taylor Humphrey had the coverage. Here's Chris Cotter again in the studio. Thank you, Chris. So the Gators trying to make it, what, 30 straight over Kentucky. In that series that has been very one-sided uh, one towards Florida. And second down out of the gun. This is Wales trying to find a hole behind that second most experienced offensive line in the country. And he picks up nine. It appears to be just shy of the marker. A nice job by the right guard, Ray and Lamp, the left tackle on that outside run. White will throw the other way. Norris has the first down out across midfield. And guys, with the ability of Western Kentucky to run the ball a bit this series, you've got to figure the play action pass is going to be coming soon. Yeah, that balance, Rocky, we talked about it. They can do a little bit of both. They can start getting them safety to come downhill a little bit and honor that run. It's going to be important in this game to get those play actions off for them if they want to get big plays down the field. Blitz coming on first down. White heaves it downfield. Uh, running down the far sideline. Incomplete intended for Lucky Jackson. The redshirt freshman out of Lexington. Right now, 26, Marlon Humphrey is locking down on all these receivers. He's got tremendous speed. Son of former running back Bobby Humphrey. His mom's a track star, UAB, 400-meter champ. I'll tell you what, he's been dead on. Each time he's covered a different receiver, he's right on him. He's going to be man-to-man -man the entire game on whoever's in front of him. Marlon had the pick six against USC last Saturday night. Eighth play of the drive here for Western. Wales trying to get to the outside, and Minka Fitzpatrick wouldn't let him get there. Minka's that corner slash star player. He becomes a player in the box as that slot defensive back, and right there, he's a tremendous asset in the running game for this team. They have had tremendous secondary guys uh, over the years at Alabama, and certainly for Saban, they've got another special group with Humphrey, Jackson, Harrison, and Fitzpatrick. And now it's Quinton Baker in at tailback on third down. White backside pressure coming pass incomplete as Jonathan Allen got to the quarterback as he released. And again, the timing. He knows the pressure's coming. He's counting on he can get that extra second to get it off. Watch around the outside of your screen, working... Taylor Forrest on the inside. It's a nice job getting to the quarterback, and Mike Smith's not going to have a lot of time to make those decisions. 
be aware this could be a fake area too. a team like Western Kentucky trying to get something going trying to mix it up potential fakes that looks like a lot of the starters on defense that stay out there for this special teams play as the ball will bounce into the end zone for the touchback 46 yards on that punt on a hot steamy day here in Tuscaloosa 10-3 Bama Every play. Yes, sir. They put it in their hands just like us. Hey, I'm here to get a victory. Y'all here to get a victory. Let's go. Uh, it's a, such a special moment for the fans and obviously a special day for the players and coaches at Western Kentucky when you get to come and Show your stuff in front of 100,000 fans and play the number one team in the land. Uh, a great uh, thing for their team. I mean, you come in here, you get to play Alabama, the crown, a uh, beautiful day here. Uh, the excitement, I mean, it's a huge opportunity for this football team, and they're playing well early on. Hanging around right now, Alabama with the 10-3 lead, and it's back to work for the offense. Under the guidance of Jalen Hurts, he's been able to distribute the ball to his receivers. They've been getting their guys out on the perimeter a yeah. little bit more. It's been nice protection up front. He's had a lot of time to survey the field. Just that decision process. And again, a lot of that is pre-snap. Watching the coverage and seeing where those zones will be. Once that speeds up for him, he'll be even better. But he's been uh, on point so far as far as connecting with his receivers and tight ends. He's hit four different guys so far, including five throws to Calvin Ridley. Looking downfield to Garrett Dieter, and it's out of his reach. How about Chris Cotter with uh, an update on the Badgers? Well, no stumble there for Wisconsin after that huge win up at Lambeau Field over LSU last week. It was a rough opening week for the SEC. They went 7-7. Seven and seven. Of course, Alabama, one of the highlights. They also had three wins over ranked opponents. Foster almost lost it, able to hang on to it. Swarmed, and down he goes. We're going to mark his forward progress out around the 22-yard line. And it's fourth down. Laverick Johnson with a nice play. And guys, I think they need to get Jalen Hurts outside the pocket. Not only does that give him a little more time to deal with the pressure, but it opens up the vision, opens up, the, give him a, a much more clear view of the field. That seems to be last week when he had his most, most of his success when he was outside the pocket. Anytime you can take half the field away and he only has to go and read each level of his potential targets, you're right, Rocky, it makes it a lot easier for him uh, to make plays down the field. K.K. Scott on the punt. Fans going to field it at the 30. Stuck immediately. No return after the 47-yard punt and a 10-3 Alabama lead. ESPN College Football. Brought to you by Hyundai. Ten to three, Alabama with the lead over Western Kentucky. The home opener for the Crimson Tide as we celebrate the 12th year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets. Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kicked. To date, Allstate has donated millions in scholarship funds. Now from the college game, a return to the NFL. It's back Monday night football with a doubleheader for you. The Steelers and Washington, the L.A. Rams, and the San Francisco 49ers coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown served by Applebee's at 5 Eastern on ESPN. No Jared Goff, game one. Uh, he's not going to start for them. They're going to go with Casey Keenum. Former Houston quarterback is Mike White with the handoff for a couple of yards. That will put Western Kentucky just over 10 yards rushing the run game so far has not been able to help out Mike White a whole lot he's just four for 12 throwing it but well, he's got to make quick decisions he doesn't have the protection we talked about this defensive line a lot of second uh, team guys are in right now Bama's got to find depth at the defensive line maybe they can try to make some plays against these guys White intercepted for the second time this one to Eddie Jackson Jackson green grass in front of him 
The quarterback right cannot contain him. And it's a pick six for Bama for the second game in a row. Eddie Jackson's the field general in the secondary. He's in the middle of the field. And he's just surveying Mike White's eyes and led him right to the target. Ball flies right over the wide receiver. And he makes a huge play for this Bama defense. 55 yards on the return for the touchdown. Four pick sixes a year ago for the Bama D. Two now in their first six quarters of the new season. And it's Jackson from a defensive back into a running back, Anthony. Tracking eyes, beautiful job. And can you make some plays after you intercept it? My man, Eddie Jackson, knows what to do, taking it all the way to the house. No way a QB can stop him rumbling in for a touchdown. Seventeen to three Alabama scoring with its special teams its offense and its defense now on the 55 yard pick six for Eddie Jackson some big changes from last year to this year Anthony Yeah, you're right Raglan Reed. These are all NFL guys Jeremy Pruitt is back as a defensive coordinator with Kirby Smart leaving and now it's more reps something that Foster Allen Williams aren't used to and they have to grow into these roles be more predominant players throughout the game and they're going to get those reps as the season progresses especially with old miss coming up next week and guys you were talking about the safeties i've been watching the linebackers of course the thing i love about their linebackers foster hamilton and even ryan anderson they make plays behind the line of scrimmage a lot of linebackers hey i came out of the game i had 12 tackles yeah well they were eight yards down the field the mark of a good linebacker is how many plays you make at or behind the line of scrimmage these guys can do it and they're both 230 pounds and they're flyers he's right the speed is tremendous decision make making process for linebackers to see what's going on process information and go make a play downhill that's what these guys do best and they've done what nick saban asked of them from last week to this week let's create more turnovers they've got a couple of ints from their safeties this is quentin baker out to about the 27 yard line there's reuben foster on the tackle is the, the linebackers this year for Alabama usually traditionally been bigger guys start Reggie Raglan Trey DePriest uh, you know these Dante Hightower these guys have been really heavy but you look at Reuben Foster 235 pounds Sean Hamilton 230 it's a spread game these days your linebackers got to go sideline to sideline these guys can play action Mike White almost intercepted again by Eddie Jackson and it's third down Eddie Jackson saw this play before it even started. He was tracking, slowly tracking the quarterback. Watch him. He's just watching the quarterback. Watch how he sees it. And he's just going to jump right in the front. Mike White right now is in tunnel vision. He doesn't see anything going on. A lot of speed. He's starting to feel a little of the pressure. And there's a lot of red jerseys there around number two, Taylor, who he's trying to get the ball to. And Alabama's starting to figure it out. He may be seeing a lot more than just 11 crimson jerseys across the way right now. Third and eight. Four man rush. Incomplete and it's fourth down intended for Lucky Jackson. And after White started out at 50% passing, he has hit on just one of his last nine attempts. I'll tell you, what, look at the confidence that these corners and DBs for Alabama. There's a lot of speed with number 15, Norris, number two, Taylor. They're right on them, man-to-man -man press coverage, and they're saying, listen, if you think you can be us with speed and you think you got enough time, show me. Trayvon Diggs, this one will not get close to him. Takes a couple of Western Kentucky hops down to about the 33-yard line. That's 40 yards on the punt. Well, tonight on ESPN, it's Arkansas and 15th-ranked TCU coming your way from Fort Worth, Texas. College football primetime presented by Hampton by Hilton tonight at 7 Eastern on ESPN. 
Arkansas, we saw them squeak out the win last Saturday. They've been awfully good as an unranked team against ranked opponents the last couple of years. Yeah, well, you know, look, and they're trying to replace a lot of star power. Austin Allen, a brand new quarterback, at times showed his skill set, but they weren't as consistent. Right now, Alabama, speaking of quarterbacks, is going with Blake Barnett. Richard, freshman out of Corona, California, started against USC, was relieved, and then returned later in the game. And now they'll get the ball into the hands of Calvin Ridley once again, and a flag is down behind the run. Holding. Number nine, offense. Tenure penalty. First down. That's going to be on Bo Scarborough. The penalty flags adding up now for Alabama here in the first half. I believe that's five of them now. But back to Blake Barnett, Saban's highest-rated quarterback recruit, number one coming out of high school last week against Southern Cal, five of six hundred yards. The amount of coverage that Western Kentucky really puts on their defense against Alabama, I think he's got a nice, better chance of hitting those receivers a little early. He clearly has a better grasp on the passing game in the pocket. Let's see if he can distribute the ball to his open receivers. He had a 45-yard touchdown throw last week to Garrett Dieter. Looking for Ardarius Stewart. And he's got it out to the 35-yard line. Gain of 12. Blake Barnett, five-star recruit, the highest-rated recruit Nick Saban has ever had. It stuck out to me yesterday, guys, in the meeting. Nick Saban said, Barnett, he has the knowledge. It's the application of the knowledge. He has to believe what he sees. He has to trust it. That's the challenge for Blake Barnett. And he'll have another... A couple of plays at least to deal with that on his possession. That throw behind Calvin Ridley. Got to get warmed up a little bit. Obviously, when you come off the bench, almost a quarter and a half in, uh, you know, that's, that's a lot to ask for a quarterback to, to come in be, and be uh, as crisp as you want. But if he wants to challenge for this spot and continue to earn those reps, this is the way it's going to be. So with Jalen Hurts starting, who didn't start last week, now it's his turn to come in second and see what he can do. On third and long, the throw to Stewart, broken up. Timed well by Martavius Mims, the sophomore out of Muscle Shoals, Alabama. And it's fourth and eight. Good pressure up front. Number nine, Amarius Bryant pushing back the offensive line and getting, or at least speeding the process up for Blake Barnett. And a little late on that throw to the outside. Another appearance by the punter, J.K. Scott. Macarius Fant will be back deep. Back-to-back -back three and outs for the Tide offense. End over end. Fans going to let it go, and it will roll all the way down inside the 10, down at the 9-yard line. 56 yards on that punt from J.K. Scott. Well, it's uh, become commonplace here under Nick Saban, uh, in particular in the last few years. New quarterback, no problem. McElroy, McCarron, and Coker all won national championships as first-year starters. Yeah, but the difference is Coker was a senior, <laughs> Sims was a senior, McCarron's not. These guys were older. They've been through the ropes. They earned their spots through experiencing and being around the program. Nowadays, with recruiting and the challenges, you got to play some of these players early. Nick Saban obviously has to find out which one of these two quarterbacks he can rely on. And he keeps telling us he's going to need both. The skill set that dominates now is Jalen Hurts because of the fact that he can run the football. But again, I think it's going to be a tough decision because of the passing ability of Barnett. Taewon Taylor is the motion man. They get it into his hands. Out on the edge. And Taylor with a nice pickup of about eight yards. He's the senior out of Louisville, Kentucky. He's already their school record holder in yardage, in touchdowns caught, and uh, if not today, possibly by next week, he will become their reception. And he's the team. guy that's got the second gear when that ball's in the air. I like the way they got the ball to him right there. Real quick, short hits. Get some confidence with Mike White. Right now, he's kind of seeing a lot of different things. Most of them are red jerseys. Wales. They talked to us this week about trying to get downhill a little bit with the run game, and they really have not been able to establish that. Just 13 yards rushing so far in the first half. Well, if there's one thing that this defense does well is play against the run, and we spoke about Jonathan Allen. The reason why he came back 
for his senior year is because he wanted to work his running game. He wanted to show that he could dominate and be an all-around defensive end. He's done it today on the right side, going against the left tackle, Forrest Lamb, arguably one of the NFL prospects that's playing for Western Kentucky. Right on the rollout, he's got his tight end for the first down. Nice cutback after the catch by Steve Donatel. And Western Kentucky will move the chains. Here's Chris Cotter with more on the Irish. Thank you, Chris. Boy, it's going to be tough to top that Notre Dame-Texas game for <laughs> opening weekend. What a thriller that was in overtime going to the horns. We're certainly going to try, though. There'll be plenty of opportunities. Just week two. Wales runs into a wall of crimson at the 30. You see Alabama working some of their depth. Got Jennings, number 33, in there. 44 ball. They're trying to find out which players can help them and roll in. When it's 100 degrees out, Beth, you got to roll some of these yeah. starters out and get some play, and they need to find out what these kids can do. Second down, Taylor to the top of the screen. White play action, going to dump it off to his back, Wales. And right there waiting was Ryan Anderson in a loss of two. Ryan Anderson is a premier pass rusher for this football team, but he's a tenacious coverage man. And Mike White kind of lofts the ball, a little slow, coming to the outside. Gives plenty of time for Anderson to make a play and a tackle in space. You can't get your running back the ball in his hands to turn upfield and make a move. You're not going to get much of a game. Third and eight, pass deflected, incomplete. Hootie Jones able to break it up, and it's fourth down. Another backup getting some opportunities in this game, and he's on point. Again, not a lot of time, a little bit of pressure, just mixing it up, showing different angles of different players coming up front. Just perfect position by number six, Hootie Jones. Should have really pulled that in for an interception. Fifth punt of the first half for Jake Collins will send Trayvon Diggs back inside his own 30. Under four minutes to go in the half. The Alabama defense now in nearly six quarters to open up the season without giving up a touchdown. And USC to a couple of field goals. That will take a Western Kentucky hop down inside the 20. 54 yards on the boot. It's 17 to 3, Bama. Back here in Tuscaloosa, 3.39 to go in the first half. Number one, Alabama with the lead over Western Kentucky, 17 to three. Jalen Hurts, Blake, Barnett, both taking snaps again today. 10 for 13 for Jalen Hurts, just one for three so far for Barnett as he has just come on. Yeah, and again, the, the one surprising thing for me, Beth, only 25 yards rushing for Alabama. This team's known for toting the rock. That makes a job for a quarterback tremendous and a lot easier to make that transition when you're talking about a freshman and a redshirt freshman coming into the quarterback position. Where they have just seven rushes so far in this first half. They've only run for 25, only 17 yards rushing for Western. And perhaps with that in mind, they try to go back to Damian Harris, but T.J. McCollum, the Birmingham, Alabama native, right there to make the hit. When you talked about Lane Kiffin, you know, they're looking for a little more execution. They're looking for a little more consistency. Uh, he, him and Nick Saban talked about, listen, we're trying to get our quarterbacks to take the next step in this game. You know, hot reads, finding the blitzes, see the open receivers quicker, all those things they need to find out. This schedule's going to get a lot harder as they move forward. Barnett looking downfield. A flag is thrown near the line of scrimmage, and down goes Barnett around the 18. McCollum and Bryant with the tackle and more movement from the offensive line. Legal formation, 
Five men in the backfield. Offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. And let's check in with the studio now. Here's Chris. that Chris another busy day a busy Saturday in college football as Barnett's pass is incomplete it is third and 15 for Alabama one thing I don't understand for Blake Barnett I don't know why they don't get him an easy completion right away here get his confidence up all his passes have been play action and throws down the field get him an easy shot to Robert Foster or Calvin Ridley to get his confidence up it's pretty tough here on third and long though Barnett Good protection. He's got Stewart. Breaks a tackle at the 30. And it's a foot race down the near sideline. And Stewart stays on his feet down inside the 40 to the 36. Hey, Rocky, they're doing play action passes with their non-running quarterback. And pocket passes, finally they decide to do one in the pocket. And get it to your best playmaker. And I'll tell you what, Stewart can catch the ball, plucks it out of the air. And you better put the burners on to try to catch him. Big turn, big catch, big play by this Bama offense. 52 yards. And then a high snap goes over Barnett's head and he'll fall on it back at the 50. And a loss of 14. I can tell you this at halftime. Coach Nick Saban's gonna have a lot to talk about as far as penalties, the mistakes, execution. Listen, this is not Bama football right here. You see Bozeman, now he's been a career reserve guy, first year starter. As a junior at the center position, you cannot have that. When you're playing those caliber teams moving forward, those are the mistakes that are going to haunt you and hurt you. Stepping in to replace All-American Ryan Kelly, who is now in Indianapolis, getting set to uh, snap the football to Andrew Luck on Sundays. Barnett, little pump fake, throws it downfield over the head of Calvin Ridley incomplete. Joe Brown was there with the coverage. Just off there, ball floats on him. Got a foul through with his pass there. He's got that strong arm, and again, really little shake post. Has the separation, but the ball just flutters and, and goes high over their head. Just to finish up the thoughts we've had on Lane Kiffin. Remember what he told us in our meeting yesterday? We're not as good as last week. When they put up 52 points on USC, he knew that there were still going to be some growing pains with the true freshman quarterback and the redshirt freshman quarterback and the young running backs. Damian Harris, uh, Harris, the sophomore out of Richmond, Kentucky, wrapped up by Keith Brown, the Louisville transfer. Yep. And he also talked about, he also talked about the interior line and the line as a whole not quite being like old Bama lines in the past. The mashers, the big strong guys across the board, especially inside, and it's a work in progress. This is something they're trying to grow, and, and you know, you don't get those warm-up games anymore. I mean, right off the jump, you're playing USC. Now you got Western Kentucky, you got Ole Miss, Ole Miss next week, up. so you don't have a lot to really hash out early on in the season, so you got to try to figure out a good game plan and find those players. Now let's take a look at this week's college football rankings brought to you by Capital One. Clemson eking out a win, as did Georgia today, barely getting by Nichols while Florida State and Michigan rolled. Yeah, you know, and I, I like Florida State. I think they're the be second best team in the country. And Houston, to me, they made a nice jump, but I think they're a top five team. They've proven it end of last year and this year that they're a team to be dealt with. Might be the game of the week next week. Florida State at Louisville on Saturday. The fourth down punt for J.K. Scott. Fair catch made at the 14. Well, you can kick off your week one of NFL action on Sunday with us on ESPN. First at 10 Eastern, it's NFL Insiders, the Sunday edition. And then at 11, it's the new Sunday NFL Countdown crew. Berman, Dilfer, Woodson, 
Hasselbeck, Randy Moss. He'll take you right up to kickoff. And of course, you can watch that on your phone and your app and your tablet and everything else. Star studded cast yeah. right there. A lot of good games early on. I mean, you know, Jaguars, uh, an up and coming team, they play the Packers, tested early, see if that young talent could play well. Buccaneers, Atlanta playing against each other, another up and coming team. And team you call for, Oakland Raiders playing the Saints on the road. Can they be one of those surprise young teams that step up and become someone to challenge with? A lot of young talent in Oakland, including Amari Cooper, the former wide out here. And White is slammed to the turf, and there's going to be a flag after the play. And it's going to be on Tim Williams. There's no foul for intentional grounding. The ball was thrown into the vicinity of an eligible receiver. We have a personal foul, roughing the passer. Number 56 in the defense. 15 yard penalty, long out of first down. A little extra here by Tim Williams. You know, he made a fantastic play, so fast, he's so quick. Once that ball comes out of the quarterback's hands, right there, and you know what, here's the thing. He doesn't he see, see the ball yeah. come out because he's blinded right here from behind. So honestly, he still thinks he has the football. So that's a great shot by our video video guys and camera guys on the, on the field. And you know, again, he's a violent player. It looks excessive because the ball's out of his hands, but he has no idea. Plus, I think White, he actually had his right hand wrapped up. White tossed that out with his left. So Williams figures he's got the ball there. But it is a first down for Western Kentucky off the penalty. And Wales with some room. Anthony Wales has the first down out to the 44-yard line. Eddie Jackson with the stop. Yeah, the clock briefly stops here as they set the chains. This offense needs to get up quick. Not a unique opportunity here with 50 seconds. Two timeouts for Western Kentucky. They've had a lot of success with their running game. Wales last year, the sixth year in a row, they had a 1,000-yard rusher. And now in the final minute of the half, White will step out of bounds, picks up about four. That's about 20 seconds, that play, from actually getting the snap, looking down the field, and running out of bounds. Again, those are vital seconds when you have two timeouts left. And be a nice little jump on momentum here if they can kind of get themselves in an opportunity to potentially kick a field goal. Look at those rushing yards, Beth. Unbelievable today. Yeah. Really, both sides. The one that's glaring is, is Bama's 13 yards in this game. Taylor trying to run underneath. He has the catch. Lincoln tackles down to the 40-yard line. Goes Taewon Taylor. 27 seconds to go. Again, they don't do a lot of this. I don't know why, but I would clock it right here. Get up on the line and get yourself some time. The clock is ticking. They got two timeouts. Very poorly judged time management here. And they do not have a proven good place kicker. The catch is made by Taylor. It's inbounds, but it looks like it's got the first down yardage, and here comes the timeout with 10 seconds. It is a 30. You know, Taylor's such a unique receiver. You know, a lot of traffic underneath, but he's elusive, can slip these defenders. Very aggressive DBs for Alabama. Gets himself in the position. That's six for 109 so far for Taylor, and a nice job here. A lot of time got pulled off the clock. They, I know they get the timeout, and they get set up, but with, like you said with the field goal kickers, you've got to get a little closer than this to give yourself a chance. So, talked about targets early on the game. Ten times Mike White has looked his way. The pressure's been on Mike White all day, but just off that, 109 yards receiving in the first half, pretty darn good against a defense and a secondary like Alabama. This is his last catch that got the first down yardage. He's got that forearm tucked underneath the football there. Nice job. You see the hand strength and the ability to track the football. Scouts are watching him. And again, they're not comfortable with a field goal attempt from here. Possibly not even another 10 yards. White under pressure, and Duran Payne was right in his face. And again, this is where... Check the that. That's Allen again. And again, this is where the time comes into play. Now you got five minutes, five seconds left. Again, a little too far to put a kicker out there. If they would have conserved their time, potentially spiked it. And even on that one play with 52 seconds left, they ran. They got no yardage. 20 seconds burned off. I missed a unique opportunity here, Beth, in my opinion. 
It will be a 30 second timeout. And it looks like they're going to go ahead and use that last timeout with five seconds to go as we get uh, rapidly approaching halftime. Beth Bowens along with Anthony Beck, Rocky Boyman down on the sideline. We've both been surprised by the lack of run game for both these teams. As expected for the Tide, we've seen both quarterbacks here in the first half. Lack of execution up front, there's no question. You know, when you're rotating quarterbacks and you don't have a running game to really lean on like they did at USC, it becomes a problem. And not a lot of good continuity. You see some substitutions rushing around on Alabama. So they got to clean all that up. They're in good position right now. Uh, defense is playing well. I mean, you're talking about getting interceptions and scoring. That's big. Uh, a huge opportunity to finish off the half here on a good note. Yeah, they did not give up a touchdown, of course, last week in the win against USC. They have not given up a touchdown here in the first half. And now they will decide to try and go for the field goal. It's... Skyler Simcox, who was one for one against Rice. This is a 47-yard attempt. And it may have been tipped at the line. It's going to come up well short. Was that Allen again? Talked to Tony Levine early on, the special teams coordinator for Western Kentucky. He was worried about low kicking. Okay, and right here you're going to see Allen squeezes through. A big guy getting skinny in between those two offensive linemen. I'll tell you what, he is a big-time player. Look at him get skinny right there, slide right through. I'll be honest with you, wherever he is, you better find him yeah. and you better block him because if not, he can wreck your day. 17-3, to Alabama with the lead at the half. Now let's get you to Chris Cotter, Butch Davis, and Jonathan Vilma in the studio for the Dave & Buster's Halftime Report. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. As we welcome you back to Tuscaloosa, Alabama, 17-3. The Crimson Tide are leading the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky. Eddie Jackson with a pick six, 55 yards on an interception return. The big play for Alabama on the defensive side. As we get set to start the third quarter, Beth Mullins along with Anthony Beck. And Anthony... Uh, both quarterbacks had opportunities in that first half. Not a whole lot of help from the run game for either one of those guys. Well, like Nick Saban said before he went in, they are loading the box. He's not going to yep. be stubborn and continue to try to run against that. Yep. The quarterbacks have been okay. Jalen Hurts is 10 for 13. He's just got to speed his process up. Barnett comes into the game. He missed some wide open receivers. And those penalties took away some big plays down the field for them. So they got to execute. They've been talking about it. And he means it. He wants to see execution by this football team. And it's got to happen in the second half. Jalen Hurts. The starter today. The first Alabama freshman in 32 years to get the call to start a game for the Tide. Just the 13 yards rushing is Western Kentucky. Uh, has been putting a lot of guys up front. 216 yards passing for Alabama. 152 of those coming from Jalen Hurts, who was 10 of 13 in that first half. Down to Rocky. Guys, I talked to Jeff Brom, Western Kentucky's head coach. Obviously, he is, a, he is ecstatic with their defense, holding Alabama in that vaunted rushing attack to just 13 yards and 17 points. He said offensively, we got to start running the ball better to open up the downfield shots. Guys. Crimson Tide will have it to start out the second half. Trayvon Diggs is tripped up as we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Well, Jalen Hurts has been a factor in this football game. He's been accurate, he's made some big plays. I like him out of the pocket. Last week he was good. Get it to his playmakers. He did that in the first half. Defensively, he's been all over the place. It started with that INT return by Eddie Jackson, the leader in the back end. They are really tracking Mike White right now, the quarterback, who really has no answers for Alabama's defense, who's been the story of this game. So it is back to Jalen Hurts. 
with Damian Harris returning at tailback. And then they'll go play action. Hurts trying to avoid the pressure coming right up the middle from T.J. McCollum. And the transfer from UAB is making some plays alongside Amarius Bryant. And guys, you heard Nick Saban. He said they're clouding the box right now. We got to be able to complete the balls downfield, but they can't do that from the pocket. They got to start rolling Jalen Hurts outside the pocket and giving him a better view of the football field. Hurts on second down. He's going to stay in the pocket and throw, and it's caught back shoulder to Garrett Dieter, and he's got the first down out across the 30-yard line pick up a 17 and you know the offensive line obviously hasn't been able to create the holes with the loaded boxes but the protection's been there let's be honest you know Jalen Hurts has had time to deliver a football to an open receiver he just got to spot them a little quicker in the second half Hurts play action here he is on the rollout we'll tuck it and run with it and the stiff arm out of bounds around the 35 yard line again it was McCollum that was close by defensively He's been their top guy, as expected. The numbers so far, Hurts and Barnett. And Barnett only had two series in the game, but again, they asked him to come out swinging and passing, and he wasn't able to connect early on. So Jalen Hurts right now is getting the bulk of the snaps for Alabama's offense. Hurts has the touchdown pass to Calvin Ridley from four yards out. This is Harris getting the edge and the cutback out to the 45-yard line and a run of 11 yards. Well, that's the spark they need and if it's not going to be between the tackles get to the edge nice job everybody zoning outside you see number 30 uh, 13 Stewart on the outside blocking those receivers have to be a big part of the perimeter running coach Kiffin trying to mix it up now instead of pounding it up the middle working some of those outside stringing run plays and that ties now for their longest run of the day at 11 yards Hurts as Harris stays in to help out blocking, and Jalen Hurts has to throw it away. They put a corner blitz on the outside. They had enough guys to protect it. Damian Harris picked it up, but again, you got to see that open receiver hit him quickly right off that blitz. And again, these are learning processes. These are true freshmen. I mean, let's not go into this game assuming these guys are going to light the world on fire. They're great players, but it's going to take some time. It's going to take some snaps, and it's going to take some reps for these guys to truly be ready for the season as we go on. This is where Alabama really started to crank things up, get it rolling in their USC win last week. Can they do it again? Harris out in the flat. Got a nice block from Ridley and down to the 45-yard line of Western Kentucky. Looks like he's about a yard shy of the marker in a nine-yard pickup. Guys, one thing I'm noticing down here, just before the snap, the Western Kentucky defensive line is stemming their mo their movement. They're coming from a one technique to a three technique. I think they're trying to confuse this Alabama offensive line. Here we go right now. Hurts thought about following Harris, steps to the outside, and he's got the first down. Shoved out around the 42. That was Brandon Leston coming up from the secondary. And when you have a young offensive line and you start stemming your defense, it takes them off the tracks that they want to block, especially in pass protection. And right now, Western Kentucky hasn't been great getting pressure on the quarterback within the pocket, so they're hoping that that movement can open up some holes for them to get to the QB. All right, here you go, Anthony, the former tight end. you got two tight ends lined up on the left side with Foster. They're going to lead the charge for Damian Harris. Gets down inside the 40. How about the play calling thus far, or the play selection? Last week against USC, they ran it 45 times. They've already thrown it more today than all of last week. Yeah, and, and it's all predicated on what the defense gives you. I mean, perfect example is LSU is a team that's going to run the ball no matter what's in the box. Well, Alabama's a little smarter. Coach Kiffin's a little smarter. If you're low in the box, you got to pass it, so it puts a little more stress on the pass game with two very young quarterbacks. For Scarborough in a tailback on second down. Hertz will use him as the decoy. Throws for the end zone. Stewart is out there. It's underthrown and it's incomplete. Laverick Johnson had the coverage. It's a great design play. It's play action. And Stewart has his man beat. You got to be quicker. The process has to speed up. 
a little faster. The ball is in the air, but he's got that three, four yard cushion. Now, all of a sudden, since the ball's hanging up and he throws it late, the defensive back has a chance to catch up. Immediately coming out of that spin and that play action, he's got to get the ball, set his feet, and throw it fast in order to make this play happen. Alabama today, four of 10 on third down. Play action again. Off the hand of Ridley. And it's fourth down. And again, there's space between Ridley and the DB. This time, instead of putting air, he tries to target a low, a low hard throw. And it's out of the reach where if he puts a little air on it, he'll get it yeah. and Ridley can run under it. Those are the things right now that these quarterbacks have to learn. And they're going to go through the growing pains. And they might be going for it here on fourth down. Hurts will stay in the game. They need the 31-yard line. Hurts throws. Ridley with the catch, and he's right near the mark. The forward progress may have gotten him enough. And the tackle made by Joe Brown. He gets the separation, comes back, balls in the air. It's a heck of a job by the defender there hitting him right at the line unfortunately getting proper death by your receivers is key on that and that's what they did enough to get the first down they get the fourth down conversion they keep the drive alive 12th play coming up and let's see if they're going to review this you know joe brown he makes contact right in the area i think right now they want to look at that or at least coach brown's going to say listen let me take another look yeah. at that in the booth to see exactly where the ball was after they stopped progress of full progress by the receiver. I did not see the challenge, uh, but Brom obviously talking with the officials over there. They're going to take a peek upstairs. Western Kentucky is challenging the ruling on the field of that it was a first down. So there is the challenge from Jeff Brom in Western Kentucky. As it stands, it's a first down for Alabama. And it would get Calvin Ridley six catches for 106 yards, including the touchdown. So after a quiet night against USC where he got a lot of attention from defenders, two catches for nine yards, it's a different story here today. Again, that 31 right there is the marker. The catch is made around the 33. Does he get back to it? Again, with no lines there to actually see exactly where the ball would stand. Be a tough judgment. They're going to keep reviewing. We're going to take the timeout and be back in a moment. Back here in Tuscaloosa where the ruling on the field will stand. It's a first down Alabama on the fourth down conversion and moving the chains. I mean, listen, there's no hashes there, and it looks like it could be behind, but if you can't find an actual spot on the field, then you cannot change it because it's not indisputable video evidence. That was a challenge from Western Kentucky, so they do lose a timeout. They only have two left. Receiver screen, Ridley, huge block by Cam Robinson to bury a defender. Ridley headed all the way to the other side of the field and flags fly as Ridley goes out of bounds. Like a block in the back. Number 13 of the offense. 10-yard penalty. First down. Anytime the receiver is going to bring a play all the way back, you get a lot of crackbacks and players trying to get involved. Jalen Hurts trying to throw a block there. I think he's getting his, his face mask thrown around a little bit on there, but Stewart, you're going to see him. Hey, with the that block was right the, here. Yeah. Right there yeah. on the back. With Hertz engaged. He's probably telling Hertz, stay out of the way, let me take care of the block, and you made him turn around. That's what he's saying to himself. Eight penalties now for 65 yards for Alabama. That'll set him back to the 40. First and 20. Hertz all day to throw it. He's got Dieter down the middle, and Garrett dropped it at the 10. 
He was counting the steps to the end zone, and he forgot something rather important on the way. Great protection, and this is really wide open. The linebackers stay underneath, and it's a perfectly thrown ball, and a sure-handed Garrick Dieter. 94 catches last year. I think he smelt the end zone prior to bringing that in, and again, that's a catch you have to make as a senior wide receiver on this football team. The transfer from Bowling Green after Dino Babers left BG to go to Syracuse. With that big season and now wearing the crimson. Hertz is flushed out of the pocket. And he'll wisely step out around the 35-yard line. So it's going to set up a third and long as he gets five yards back. Jason Johnson was there defensively. End at the first half, 10 of 13, obviously now. Trying to find his way in the second half. Dropped a touchdown opportunity there and some pressure in the middle. When those opportunities get left on the field, things happen. Now not as smooth as the operation was. You saw in that last play getting pressure up the middle and getting flushed out of the pocket. And now they go back to Harris, uh, tailback with the two tight ends on the 14th play of the drive. Trying to keep it going. Underneath, it's Ridley on the crossing route, and he won't get there. Sniffed out by... Johnson and Johnson, Chris and Jason on the tackle. It's and it's fourth down. It's a combo right there. Johnson does a nice job. And, and really, you have a crossing route coming underneath. It's there, but Jalen Hurst doesn't get his eyes across and see that defender coming in. He's going to be right on the tackle. You've got to trust. The receiver's going to trust the quarterback. Nobody's home. And all of a sudden, really turns around. There's a defender right in front of him. If anything, allow him to run past or run the football. So short. Big opportunity after you drop a football. Now, all of a sudden, you're in a long fourth down. So, Adam Griffith is going to try the 53-yard field goal. Whistles prior to the snap. And is this going to be a delay of game delay on game. Alabama? Offense. Tiger penalty, fourth down. And Saban is beside himself. Another penalty, and this one will push them out of field goal range. Ninth penalty has Saban looking for answers. And he wants Bateman to speed the process up, getting the snap. And again, that clock's running down. He is a quarterback. He was part of that three-man race. you got to be aware of the, the clock running down. There he wasn't, and they pay another penalty, like you said, Beth. Been kind of an Achilles heel today with this football team. A dropped pass that looked like six points, and now a penalty on the field goal attempt that cost them at least three. <laughs> Alabama comes up empty. Back to Western Kentucky when we come back. ESPN College Football brought to you by the City Double Cash Card. Look at some of uh, the recent Alabama running backs, including a couple of Heisman Trophy winners in Mark Ingram and Derrick Henry. But uh, so far today, it's been a different story. Just 39 yards rushing. Exasperation from Alabama head coach Nick Saban. Uh, not a clean game thus far for Alabama in some regards, but Saban is right back in there encouraging a lot of young guys that are actually uh, starting and playing in their first home game here today. Well, Western Kentucky's getting some chances. They just can't do anything on offense themselves. They have not found success on the ground either, just 38 yards rushing. And for a Western Kentucky team that piled up 649 total yards last week, just a buck 63 so far today against Alabama. The Bama defense is not the Rice defense. Wait on the rollout. It's his tight end, Shaq Johnson. He swarmed there by a bevy of tacklers out at the 15, but that's first down yardage. Guys. Alabama co-defensive coordinator Tosh Lupoy beside himself on the sideline getting this defense fired up saying look it's got to be us it's got to be us our offense is struggling right now he's putting on them to make the plays in this game right now 
Let's see if they can get a stop and really bury Western Kentucky deep in its own territory as Wales tries to bounce to the outside. And there is that improved run defense from Jonathan Allen. I'll tell you, he's everywhere on the football field. Last week, pass rushing, also stopping the run. Watch him on the left side of your screen right here. Again, he's just so tough and strong against the run. Watch him just lock out the tackle, and that's four slam, and NFL quality offensive tackles going against him and just sheds the block, makes the, makes the tackle in the backfield. Big play. Right on second and time. Fires across the middle looking for Taylor, and it's broken up by Marlon Humphrey. And it's third down and long. Good job by Humphreys, their best cover corner. He's aggressive. Physical lockdown guy is going to be in your face. He'll challenge you, even with the tremendous speed some of his receivers have. He's not scared, and the, and the Batman defense coordinator Pruitt's not scared to put him out there. White pressure in his face and down he goes Dalvin Tomlinson with the third sack of the day for Alabama Tomlinson was an unsung hero in last week's game he had three quarterback hurries and when you're going up the middle you got to find so many different guys he does a little wrap technique around the nose guard no one's there to pick him up and he's just too big and strong. He jumps up. You see those hands up in the air. We talked about it. Trying to swat those passes down. But Mike White's not even going to chance it. Pinned back that far. Another big stop by this Alabama defense. Another punt out of his own end zone for Collins. Diggs with a chance from his own 40. Gets a block from Jackson. Breaks a tackle at midfield. And then wrapped up and corralled around the 48-yard line. 12 yards on the return. We've got more with Jonathan Allen. We're going to huddle up with Becton Boyman when we come back. We are in the huddle with one of the best defensive ends in college football, Alabama's Jonathan Allen. He's going to show us his stuff today as a pass rusher. You ready for this? I'm excited. Let's get started. All right, Jonathan, it's third and nine. We've got to go get the quarterback. Take us through the process. What's your plan? I'm looking at his pass. If they're, if they're horizontal and they're in front of me, I'm going to try to beat him outside. If they turn and they're in, yeah, in the vertical, I'm going to try to beat him inside. So as I'm rushing, I'm aware of his shoulder pass. I'm going to try to give him something to look at. And based on what he gives me, I'm going to react to it. All right, that's all the time we have anymore, and Anthony Beck is going to be beat up. Jonathan, good luck. Man, good job, Thank you. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. <laughs> now, when Jonathan Allen gets that big contract, he owes me a brand-new shirt, and I never miss a block. So I was trying to show I wasn't, you know, the best blocker. Boosting in that his confidence. That was great stuff. I love it. Anthony, let's be honest. You were outgunned yesterday. Come on now. <laughs> Jonathan Allen was eating you up. <laughs> He's impressive, man. I, I really like him. A terrific young man. Uh, he had a lot of fun with it as well. The All-America candidate. They have held Western Kentucky in check, but the offense for Alabama is yet to light it up. They'll get it to Damian Harris back down inside the 40-yard line as they start out with their best field position of the day and the numbers so far on ha uh, Allen. Yeah, you know, Allen says he thinks he's Julius Peppers. Uh, to me, you know, when you watch him play in the game, he reminds me of a Jarrell Casey from the Titans. Big time defensive end, a guy that can attack you at the line of scrimmage. 6'1", 305 pounds, Casey is. He's 6'3", 290. Again, plays the run, can play the pass. He's a complete defensive end, and that's why he came back to play his senior year. And for me, this kid's going to you know, be one of the top draft picks coming out of the draft. He wears 93, by the way, because of Peppers. Let's check in with Chris Cotter. He is having some tough luck weather-wise to start off as uh, Tom Luganbull as we check on the injured player for Western Kentucky. It's one of their starting cornerbacks, Joe Brown, the junior out of Louisville. 
And look at the right side of your screen. You'll see number seven. Kind of gets stuck low. Trying to make that tackle there and not quite sure if it was an upper body injury maybe a cramp but again. They're walking him off the field. Yeah not to the sideline right back to the locker room. It's good to see him at least walking off on his own two feet. Hey guys and with their starting cornerback Joe Brown going off the field you got to wonder does Alabama take a shot downfield here with a backup corner in. And the backup corner is right here guys so we'll keep an eye on that. Said they'll run it with Hurts, who took a hit over by the sideline. Bumped out after a short game by Marcus Ward, the Birmingham native from Vestavia Hills High School. And that's enough for a first down right there for the Tide. Jalen Hurts has the skill set to be a dominant player in college football. He's only a true freshman, folks. There's a growing period for him, but his running ability, being elusive, he's got a strong arm. And he's got a lot of weapons around him. Ridley, terrific yards after the catch for Calvin down inside the 25 and another first down. And after the quiet night last Saturday, big day today. Get the ball to your best players and let them go make somebody miss. And we talked about the new DB coming into the game. That's Martavius Mims, 27. Go attack a body that hasn't been on the field all day. Right there, they take advantage. Eight catches, 121 yards for Ridley. And this is Robert Foster, the junior from Pennsylvania, who Ridley replaced in the starting lineup last year after Foster got injured early in the season. And again, to come all the way back. And the running game obviously hasn't been sparked. They haven't been able to run it much, but these quick passes are similar yeah. to a running yep. game. I mean, you know, I think folks think, okay, well, they're spreading it out. It's more of a spread offense. It definitely is, but those outside passes can be big gainers. Back to Harris, a short gain as they run it up the middle. Chris Johnson with the tackle. We're seeing more of Alphonse Taylor, number 50 there in the Crimson, as he works his way back into the lineup for Alabama at right guard. Penalties have been an issue up front for the big fellas today. Another receiver screen. This is Stewart. And right there waiting for him was Leverick Johnson to tie him up. Stewart, nice second effort. And another big collision. Man, big time collisions right there. And Stewart is a strong wide receiver. Ability to break tackles and get physical right there. Just a huge collision by him and the defensive back. Right to the midsection of Marcus Ward. So this is a second starter. This is the safety that lines up alongside Joe Brown, who we just saw head to the locker room. He's a four year starter for this football team. Him and Leston, number 31, are the two leaders in the backfield for this team. Guys, with Marcus Ward being down, the, the one, I guess, benefit of it is that this Western Kentucky defense gets a little bit of a blow. They were completely gassed. Our Omarius Bryant, the nose tackle, Chris Johnson, hands on the hips. You could tell they were getting pushed off the line of scrimmage. We talked earlier, Lane Kiffin said their front line guys, their starters on that line are really good. The backups, not so much depth. So right here, a much needed blow for these guys here at the Western Kentucky defense. Time of possession is plus nine right now, Rocky, for Alabama on a day where down on the field it's been over 100 degrees as Ward gets some assistance. A reminder that tonight on ESPN is Arkansas TCU as the old Southwest Conference gets back together. College football primetime presented by Hampton by Hilton tonight at 7 Eastern on ESPN. TCU winners of 14 straight at home. What's going on with Gary Patterson's defense right now? He's not thrilled with that. He's made some changes this week. Back to the ground game. Harris churning inside the 10. And another first down. It's first and goal, Alabama. Go behind the strength of your line. If there's any of one of those players who the strength and power is, it's the left tackle, Cam Robinson. So. Again, right behind him, gets a nice first down, moves the chains, and gives this opportunity and this team a chance to potentially score. 
When you're in the red zone, you're a freshman quarterback, you got to make sure you execute here. No penalties and be firm on your passes if they decide to go that way. Hurts rolls out, drops it underneath. Our Darius Stewart threw some traffic for the touchdown. As a couple of hilltopper toppers wiped each other out of the play. This should have been really a tackle for a loss. Stewart's going to come across. And there's two defenders on point. Watch number two get tripped up by his strong safety, cutting out his own player's legs. And really was the key block to getting that touchdown score. So again, and Darrell Green, number Darrell Green, number 28, just comes into the game as a backup behind Marcus Ward. Two touchdowns last week for Stewart, adds another one this week. And for Jalen Hurts, his second TD toss of the day. And Alabama extends the lead 24-3. Well, let's take a look at how Tide fans and students dress in Houndstooth the tire here at home games with Taco Bell's student of the game. The unofficial third color of the Crimson Tide. Uh, as the story goes, Sonny Werblin with the New York Jets was trying to recruit Joe Namath to the old AFL, so we got Bear Bryant a houndstooth hat, and he wore it to a game one day back in the early 60s, and the trend began. Beneficial for the Bear, also beneficial for Sonny Werblin and Joe Namath, as uh, not only did he win a national championship here a few years later, he'd be up on Broadway winning a Super Bowl. Let's check into the studio with Chris. All right, thank you very much, Chris. Coming off the score here for Alabama to make it 24 to three. Western Kentucky since that field goal a couple of interceptions, a blocked field goal, and now a change at quarterback, Tyler Ferguson. The transfer who has played both at Louisville and at Penn State. Came on and played a little bit last week in their win against Rice. And there is the reason why we are seeing Tyler Ferguson as starting quarterback Mike White walks back into the locker room. One thing that head coach uh, Jeff Brown talked about was he doesn't want his quarterback to take hits. And unfortunately today he's taken a, a multiple hits in this in this game versus the Alabama defense. And now he's taken back. And listen, the quarterback position was fought all the way to the end of summer camp. And he said it was a hard decision all the way up to the end. So again, you throw for 500 yards in the first game, a little different against Banner's defense. Ferguson under pressure, throws incomplete, intended for Taewon Taylor. Marlon Humphrey with the coverage, of course, Western Kentucky. You, you want to come in here, you want to compete, you want to, yeah. you want to try and win this thing, but I think first and foremost, the reality of it is, you don't want to go home with a lot of people hurt, and we've seen three starters, two of them go back to the locker room, one of them to the sideline, including the starting quarterback. Well, they played a strong game up to this point, and I'll tell you, you know, when you talk about their conference coming up, I mean, they have some good players on defense, they have a good scheme, and their offense has plenty of playmakers, so Mike White's going to be the guy you have to take care of to get through a season as they make their run for a potential another conference championship. Five wide on third down, Ferguson throws to Taylor, it's caught and immediately taken down by Eddie Jackson. And let's see where the spot is. It appears to be a yard shy and it's fourth down. Taylor's got really good hands. I mean, you talk about every time he catches it, there's an Alabama defender right on him. I mean, that's hard, dude. That ball's floating in the air. They throw it all the way across the field. I really like what he's done. He had 100 yards in the first half. He's obviously not going to be able to get down the field the way he wants to because they just honestly can't hold up up front to get that vertical passing game going. But he's shown that he can run those intermediate routes and be effective as a mid-range pa uh, pass runner. Jake Collins on to punt. 
Trayvon Diggs with the fair catch at the 24 yard line. 41 yards on the punt. Let's see if we can go back to the previous possession when Mike White was still in at quarterback. Yeah, it was that Dalvin Thompson the sack, yep. coming around, and he gets kind of sandwiched by three guys, unfortunately, and it's not going to feel good, obviously, in that point and later on. It's an offensive line. Some chances early in this football game. Trick plays are known for doing that, but, of course, you can't throw it into double coverage. And if they started to get an eye for Mike Smith, Mike White. Mike White was eyeballing a lot of his receivers. And then, of course, the blocked field goal by none other than Jonathan yeah. Allen, one of our big-time impact players. It's been a kind of an up-and-down day for this Western Kentucky team. Jalen Hurts will hand it off. The end around to our various Stewart. There have been a lot of things, obviously, going on for Alabama today as well. But one thing worthy of pointing out is the fact that all 25 point or 20 17 of the 24 points on the board for alabama they had the one defensive score the 17 points were with jalen hurts at quarterback we'll right. just toss that out for what it's worth in terms of who's been able to move the team and today. Two, two explosive plays that got called yeah. back stored early in the game he had a bomb to him down the field perfect pass Dieter drops a ball at the from the 50 yard line going in another explosive play so he's been on point he just got to make plays scarborough Lunges out across the 30 to the 32. We saw Blake Barnett for three series in the first half. We have not seen him yet here in the third quarter. After Hertz got the start, there have not been many opportunities for freshmen to start a game at quarterback for Alabama. Of course, uh, for years in the 60s and 70s, freshmen were ineligible. I think the theme right now is it's just Jalen Hurts' team. And uh, early on, if he can continue to improve, he's going to be the guy. Ridley comes back for it. Makes the catch for the first down out to the 40. And the big day continues for Calvin Ridley. His ninth catch, 131 yards today for the sophomore who uh, broke all of Amari Cooper's rookie receiving records last year. The thing I like about Ridley and the thing I like about Stewart is when they catch the ball, their initial move, the quickness to get up the field and get something, whether it be a yard, four or five yards, they don't get immediately tackled at the point. Very quick, elusive. They know where the defenders are coming downhill to get them, and rarely do they ever get stopped on point. Hurts has the time, has a man deep, incomplete. He overshoots Dieter. Drew Davis was on the coverage. They had the slot man matched up with a linebacker. Uh, again, another opportunity you'll leave on the field. Protection is fantastic. And I want to credit this offensive line from a pass protection standpoint. They've given the quarterback time right there. He gets the survey left to right all day long. And when he gets the ball in the air, he's just inaccurate as a passer. And again, some ups and downs that you'll be dealt with. When you're playing Ole Miss, though, you got to hit those. And you got to catch them, too, when they come your way. They will be down in Oxford next week. Of course, Ole Miss has beaten Alabama twice in a row. Scarborough bulls his way across the 45, leaving T.J. McCollum in his wake. Little smash mouth there from Bo Scarborough. That is the end of the third quarter. Giving the folks here in Tuscaloosa a taste of what might be coming. Some chances for Alabama to be up even more. Some encouragement from Nick Saban, the number one tied around top as we head to the fourth. Three, Alabama with the lead over Western Kentucky as we head to the fourth quarter. Let's go down to the field with Rocky Boyman. Guys, one thing apparent down here on the field, the body language of the Western Kentucky defense, they look tired. Remember, most of the day, the temperatures on the field have been over 100 degrees, still about 85 degrees right now. If I'm Alabama, I sense the blood in the water, and I start pounding that run game. Well, Rocky, they uh, ran for 24 in the first quarter. They were negative yardage on the ground in the second and then started to pump it back up 55 yards on the ground in the third. The end around here to Ridley, a couple of nice cuts, and he gets into Western Kentucky territory. A reminder, too, for the Hilltoppers defense, Joe Brown and Marcus Ward, two of their starters in the secondary, are both out right now. 
and we still do not know whether or not their quarterback Mike White will be returning after a trip to the locker room just a few moments ago. Again, they continue to attack the outside in the perimeter run game. Tough to run into a loaded box, which they have. There are eight guys down in that area, but that little flip pitch to the outside getting themselves a first down. Play action. Hurts for Peter. The catch inside the 10. Bumped out of bounds at the seven yard line by Leston. And it's first and goal for the tie, 41 yards. It's a crossing route. And they watch Dieter get across. McCollum, the linebacker's trying to get there. He's just not fast enough. And that's a tough catch over the top of the defender. Beautifully placed ball by Hertz. Hertz on a rollout looking for Dieter in the back of the end zone. Incomplete. Phil Green had the coverage, if nothing else. As you talked about, not only for Coach Saban and Coach Kiffin, but their new analyst, Steve Sarkeesian, the offensive analyst coming in this week. Plenty of those guys, uh, information for those guys to mull over. Well, another thing why they brought Steve Sarkeesian in is think of the quarterbacks that he had at Washington, yeah. a little more mobile QB. That helps when you're talking about enhancing a guy like Jalen Hurts. That combination, knowing each other, is a benefit. Harris up the gut, down to the two. And it will be third and goal. And Steve Sarkeesian, who joined the staff this week. Of course, uh, the best of friends with Lane Kiffin from their days, uh, younger days on the staff of Pete Carroll at USC. And then one of their old buddies from uh, their days at Southern Cal also across the way. And the defensive coordinator, Nick Holt, for Western Kentucky, who was also with Sarkeesian at Washington. And... Sark actually had to fire Nick Holt before he went back to USC and then ran into the problems off the field. He had 10 guys First out charge there. First time out of the half, Alabama. So Alabama will call the timeout. We'll take it with them. Be right back. the student section in uh, it's full glory here this afternoon Alabama in control over Western Kentucky and driving late 13 11 to go they only had 10 guys on the field though the reason for the timeout. yeah there's nine there and a receiver outside that Jalen Hurts is looking at had to call timeout there not good when you're down that deep not having a proper formation and part of that, guys, Bo Scarborough was on the field. Apparently, he wasn't supposed to be because Nick Saban let him know afterward very, very harshly. <laughs> and well, now he's well, out. And now he's back out oh, there. And look at, there. Look at number 30 right next to him, Mac Wilson, listed as a linebacker. Playing a little fullback right here. It's either that or a little bootleg to the wide side. On third and goal, Scarborough. A reason why Saban made sure he was back out there and in the right place. <laughs> Touchdown, tied. It was third and two, and Coach Saban was like, listen, we're not passing, we're not doing anything. I want to get our big running back, Scarborough, in there, and they did. Big hole, didn't even have to touch anybody going through there to the left side. Get themselves a rushing touchdown. His second of the season after... Uh, Bo scored last week as well. Extra point for Griffiths after a 10-play drive that covered 76 yards as Alabama wearing down Western Kentucky. 100 degrees on the field, big bodies, and the big linebacker comes in and pancakes Western Kentucky in the hole. ESPN College Football. Brought to you by the new 2016 Lexus ES and ES Hybrid. It's next level Lux. A little power football from Alabama. They ground it out over the last couple of yards for the score. Yeah, we're going to keep our eyes on Mac Wilson. Let's freeze it right there. See number 30, folks. Keep your eyes on this. Mac Wilson becomes a Mac truck and grinds the linebacker T.J. McClellan out. <laughs> He's got one play all day. He's a freshman, and it wasn't even on defense. He got to be the lead blocker in an isolation block, and he did his job. One job to do, and he did it. Chris Cotter, what you got for us? Ooh. 
How about South Carolina? They could go 2-0 and <laughs> and take over first place in the East in the SEC. And that is breaking news when you're talking about the Baylor defense. Well, they were is, bottom of the barrel on defense yeah. last year. Held uh, Vandy to under 250 yards offense. It's obviously much champs got the defense going. Offense is the question. Speaking of defense, Alabama has held Western Kentucky to just nine plays and now 18 yards this entire second half. That's it. I mean, listen, from top to bottom, Alabama's defense is going to be hard to get anything on. Now, doing my film study on this, all those yards that Western Kentucky got, I knew it was going to be tough. It was going to be hard to pass. They, they weren't going to have the time to go vertical. The question was executing the defensive strategy. Jeremy Pruitt had a great plan. Every one of these 11 players did their job today. One second and seven. Ferguson going up top, incomplete. It'll be a, lo a lot different when they travel to Miami of Ohio next week for Western Kentucky. And actually, as much as they would have loved to have come in here and gotten a win, they know that in two weeks when they host Vanderbilt, they do have a shot at knocking off an SEC team in their minds. They've done it before, three wins over Southeastern Conference opponents. Jeff brown has got a great system in place. He's found a quarterback that can make some plays. Hopefully Mike White getting taken back is going to be okay. If he is, a lot of weapons to distribute the football and an offensive line with a tremendous amount of experience. It remains Tyler Ferguson in the game at quarterback, and he's got a first down toss across the middle to Nick Norris. Pickup of 12. Nick Norris is their in-space receiver, super fast. He's 5'9", 175. The other senior counterpart to Taewon Taylor, number one on the outside. So that's a nice combination that, you know, Conference USA and other teams are going to have to deal with. Seven catches last week, two more this week for Norris. They go underneath again for the completion to Steve Donatell. Well, tonight after Virginia meets Oregon, you can finish up the night on ESPN with Sports Center at night. It's Bucci and Anderson. They'll have all the highlights for you from the U.S. Open Women's Tennis. Major League Baseball, what's going on in New York? The Yankees and Mets, Anthony, are rolling towards the wild card. Sports Center at night tonight on ESPN. Also on all your apps and devices to stream on your phone if you want to see how the Yanks and Mets did as we wind down the regular season in Major League Baseball and just cranking things up the football season. The NFL, of course, kicking off in full bloom tomorrow yeah. after uh, Denver beat Carolina to start things off on Thursday. You know, Western Kentucky, their philosophy coming into this game, I like the dink and dunk style. you got to kind of take what the defense gives you. Don't really challenge Alabama's defense. Just chip away and do those little things. I think they're a little aggressive early on this game and haven't been able to get going. Blitz coming right up the middle at Ferguson. He gets the pass away, and it's caught for a first down. And into Alabama territory, down to the 35, to Lucky Jackson. Yeah, they're going to bring it all out. Brett's blitz here, cross dog in the middle. And you got to stand in there to the quarterback and deliver. When they bring blitz, blitzers up the middle, someone's going to get open yeah. crossing the field. Lucky Jackson's that guy. Good job standing in there by Ferguson and delivering an accurate pass. 21 yards on the throw to Jackson. That's their second longest pass play of the day after the 70-yard flea flicker in the first half. We talk about Jeff Brown, the head coach, and his family, his brothers. So instrumental in his football career. They're with him on his staff here. His dad, his coach... A mentor when he was younger. Even his wife Jennifer gets in. She she wants to know from time to time why he's, they're not calling this play, not calling that play. He said, I got a lot of opinions on my family you know and she, in my family. You know what she wants? She wants trick plays. <laughs> so she wants more of those flea flicker double reverses. They had one today. It worked. And then the second one, Alabama picked it up pretty quickly. Special situation for the Browns. Catch by Stevie Donatell, number 87, transfer from Wake Forest. His dad, Ed Donatell, secondary coach for the Bears, former Packers, yep. D.C. Again, they have some weapons. It's probably been their best drive of the game. Kind of chunking away, getting some yards. This Alabama defense, though, is known to come up big. A lot of second players in there for them 
trying to find some depth. Ferguson rifles that one to the end zone. Incomplete through the hands of Nick Norris. He appears to be upset with his quarterback for not throwing that one over the top. But it looked like Nick had a chance. Yeah, uh, you know, Norris has a little space on him, but Minka Fitzpatrick is, is really right on him. And that's been the story of the day. You know, a lot of tight windows. You got your backup quarterback coming in. Not a lot of space to throw the football. It's been tough all day. You really credit these DBs for their tight coverage. Tenth play of the drive. It's fourth down. Ferguson. Looking. Ferguson goes down. Sack back at the 42. And it's Jonathan Allen and Dakota Ball. It's a good job in pursuit by Jonathan Allen. As a quarterback, though, Ferguson needs to understand the situation. Right here, a lot of time, but the pressure continues to come. And look who shows up, Jonathan Allen. And I would get down on the ground, too, if I saw him chasing me. Let's take a look at today's performance spotlight brought to you by Dickies. Love watching Jonathan Allen on the field. His pursuit, quarterback carries all day. He's been in the quarterback's face and he applies hits. When you hit the quarterback, you affect him in the passing game. And even on special teams, he finds a way to get thin, even though he's 300 plus pounds to block <laughs> that kick. I love it. He was able to squirt right through there to make the play. And guys, one thing I was impressed about talking to with Jonathan offense. Allen yesterday is his football knowledge. He talked about reading the outside knee of the offensive tackle to get a better jump and talked about reading the offhand of the quarterback to know when the ball's coming out. Of course, he's, Correction. again, he's very the strong. He's a very fierce nine. player, but you combine all that with a guy who knows the game of football, that's the kind of draft pick I want. And let's be clear, Rocky, when we did that little thing on the field there, that video, I was kind of letting him win when I was kicking back. <laughs> if if that's what to, you call it, okay. I wanted to showcase his skill set, and, and, <laughs> and I'll be honest, guys, he really does have a special skill set on the field. It was a, there was a whole lot of ole from both of you, I, I felt like. As Hurts hooks up with Trayvon Diggs. This is a new weapon. Trayvon Diggs is a wanted man. He's wanted <laughs> yes. by the offensive coaches, the defensive coaches, the special teams coaches, and right now, the offense has him. Yeah, we were at practice on Thursday, and they're calling him back down the defense. Then he's got a penny <laughs> on it. Then they want him back on the offense. And Kiffin told us, yeah, that we're trying to grab him every time we can. Look, he's got a lot of speed. Tremendous amount of weapons on this football team. Just get him the ball. You get these guys the ball, they're going to make plays for you. We've seen it today. Bubble screens and those short routes, they can turn it up and make things happen. ESPN sixth-rated athlete in this freshman class. Another newbie, B.J. Emmons, is the offset back. The number one rated running back in the country this year is Hertz goes deep off the pump fake, incomplete, broken up, intended for Derek Keefe. And the defense was there for the Hilltoppers, A.J. Jackson. Yeah, and Hertz a little short on this throw. Keefe's got to adjust his body and turn. He's got to step on him on the outside. It's just that he's got to create an acrobatic catch and he couldn't do it there. Jalen Hurts just gets that accuracy down the field and lets that ball fly a little earlier. Receiver runs right under it. Hurts today 22 of 33, 281 yards and the two short touchdown passes. We have yet to see Blake Barnett here in the second half. False start. Number 73 offense. Third penalty. Third down. And, you know, it's not the NFL. You don't have uh, preseason games to get ready. You don't have a, as much time to get your guys ready. you got to do it live and in games as they start building towards the future and where they might want to be later in the season. Well, guess what? Later in the season starts next week with their title defense in the SEC and a trip to Ole Miss. And that's why he's getting the reps today. And, and unfortunately, you're right. They have to get into their schedule now. That's 281 yards you see by Hertz. There's probably... 150 to 200 yards left on the field yeah. on big plays that got turned away some drop balls so underneath to the tight end Hale Hentges out across midfield and a first down I think the normal Alabama fan would would want balance they would want to see a running attack and see some of those yards but unfortunately you go against a defense like Western Kentucky they're not the greatest defense in the league 
but they're going to stack the box and try to take something away from you. Be silly to try to run it up the gut. You've seen some perimeter runs, but the passing game's been there. Honestly, as I stand up here, I see guys all over the place open. They just got to execute that game, that side of their offense, and it could have been an even bigger day today for them. First and ten. They try to run it right up the middle. Nothing doing on the handoff to Emmons. Masai White with the tackle. Again, you come into the end of the game, you want to run the ball. They're still trying to, really, they're giving you the pass still. And at 31 to 3, you don't want to be passing. There's the rushing by the, uh, the play selection from quarterbacks. And listen, today Blake didn't get an opportunity, but Jalen obviously had a chance to showcase his arm today. A lot of positives from what I've seen, some missed passes, some drop balls, though, didn't quite get the execution that they wanted. Hurts with the deep drop and the deep throw. Robert Foster trying to get some separation. Incomplete. And there are a couple of flags down on the deck with DeAndre Ferris back in coverage. Pass interference. Number 22 defense. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. And again, the ball is underthrown. The DB's chasing the receiver who's ran by him. And because of that, his hands are all over him, impeding, impeding the block and, and, and having contact. Foster's got plenty of distance in between him. Jalen's just got to let that ball go a little sooner out of his hands so he can get that space. These receivers are flying by their guys, and they're kind of missing those opportunities down the field. And it'll show up on film when they watch this again tomorrow. First penalty of the afternoon on Western Kentucky, and that throw incomplete intended for... Trayvon Diggs and for Jalen Hurts the first true freshman to start at quarterback at Alabama in 32 years you go back to Vince Sutton in 1984 and according to some of the historians that we talked to prior to that it was only Bart Starr in 1952 coming off the bench to play and then back during World War II the late great Harry Gilmer started the season opener back in 1944 Guys like Namath and uh, Ken Stabler didn't play as freshmen. Congrats, of course, by the way, the late Kenny Stabler going in to the uh, Hall of Fame in Canton this past summer. Always recognized by Bama fans for that run in the mud from Kenny in the win against Auburn in the 67 Iron Bowl. And was a member of a couple of national championship teams here. Third down. Six and a half to go. Hertz will keep the nice juke move and he will fall forward with the first down yardage. And they can work that clock. You better break down when this young man has the football. I mean, uh, he's very elusive as a player. And this is a tremendous game for him from a passing standpoint because let's be honest, Ole Miss next week against Florida State last week, they got thrown all over the place by Florida State. A lot of passes. They gave up big yards. Their number one corner got hurt in that game for Ole Miss. So when you talk about the passing game, it's going to be big again next week against Ole Miss, and they might have to go back and forth a little bit when you're going against a guy like Chad Kelly who's going to be throwing the ball quite a bit for Ole Miss themselves. You know, they had that tough game. They blew the 22-point lead against Florida State on Monday. They came in here and won last year as Hurts looks to the end zone off the hands of O.J. Howard. It's oh. my guy, Beth. And tight ends nationwide, including the one right here in the booth, Gas. Uh, again, a crossing route. And you know, Jalen Hurts has been off today on some of his passes, but this one right on the end of his fingertips, and he just couldn't quite stretch out and get it. And guys from the sideline, Lane Kiffin, as that play was developing, is yelling, post route, post route, and as the ball goes through Howard's hands, he just puts his hands up frustrated. I think it can be a little earlier overall in this game if he, the ball gets out of his hands sooner. He can make it a little more easier on himself moving forward out of this game. B.J. Emmons gets the call 
and they will drop the uh, first down markers on the far sideline because it is first and goal Alabama after the 13-yard scamper. True freshman, the process takes some time. You'll see him grow. He sees it. He sees it open. Just got to go a little faster. Emmons again, bouncing to the outside, scrapping for an extra yard or two. Out of Morganton, North Carolina. Twice in his career at Freedom High, he rushed for over 2,000 yards in a season. Yeah, they call him Baby Marshawn Lynch. That's what Kiffin, <laughs> Coach Kiffin called him that. He said he runs like an animal. And they said at, at points in this camp, he's really been one of the best backs to, to get the ball. And you're right, big time numbers out of high school. Number one rated running back in the nation. They've got the number one rated recruit at running back next year as well. Committed. Here's Emmons weaving his way towards the end zone. Touchdown tied. Good to see the young man, true freshman, first touchdown of his Alabama career. And you follow the big guys, right? Follow the guys yeah. that can get you there. And Cam Robbins is one of those guys that he definitely wants to follow. They must have given the Mack truck Mack Wilson that playoff. <laughs> he wasn't out there leading the charge. The so linebacker slash fullback. BJ found his way anyways. The legal substitution. 12 players in formation on the defense. Penalties half the distance to the goal line. The remain to try. Crimson Tide going 11 plays, 59 yards, 4 minutes and 44 seconds. And they have appeared to uh, found some separation today, Anthony and Rocky, and the two quarterbacks, uh, primarily Jalen Hurts here today, as they get set for Ole Miss next week and continuing on with, uh, I believe, what ESPN calls the eighth toughest schedule in the country. The rest of the way for the defending national champs. Follow the big boys up the field. Cam Robinson and company lead the charge to get the young Emmons his first touchdown. Well, make sure to keep up with all the latest college football news and behind the scenes all access videos through the various ESPN social media pages like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And catch the all access videos all season long. We did a little Facebook live in yesterday, <laughs> roaming around the field and uh, checking out uh, the tunnel where a lot of the recruits come out and the Alabama players come out onto the field. Yeah, we did behind the scenes, and uh, this is one heck of a, a sight for these recruits that come and see this stuff. NFL players, I was on Nick Saban's show on Thursday night on his radio show over at Victory yes. Grill in town. Got to do a little banter back and forth. That was fun. That was a shocker. I was trying to tell you guys where to go, and neither of you guys was listening to me as we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. And uh, just the three points allowed in that uh, first quarter to Western. It's been 35 unanswered for the Tide since. Defense showed up today. Offense had their chances, and it really was a game of missed opportunities, even though they had a tremendous amount of success with three touchdown passes. Might have had six today if yeah. Jalen can hook up and a few things happen and uh, drops uh, and things of that nature. But, uh, again, a little overmatched for this Western Kentucky team, who I think has the upper edge moving into their conference as one of the better teams in Conference USA. Hertz goes 23 for 36 on the day, 287 yards, a couple of touchdowns. And the pick six, the interception return for a score for Eddie Jackson. The defense also getting in on the action as Western Kentucky goes to its third quarterback, Drew Eccles, the sophomore from Daytona, Florida, getting his first game action of the season. looking to throw and instead engulfed by the blitz of Christian Miller. Let's check in with Chris Cotter. He's got a Buckeyes update.
Thank you very much, Chris. Well, Mullen has not started 0-2 during his tenure yet at Mississippi State. Of course, they were shocked last week by South Alabama, so that's a big test for them against South Carolina to avoid that 0-2 start. And into that game last week, you know, up 20 to 7 in the fourth yeah. quarter at home, and you give up a 99 yard and a 71 yard drive yeah. to your opponent, South Alabama. So, again, they got to clean up a lot of things the post Dak Prescott yeah. era. AD after Dak, if yeah. you want to <laughs> borrow that. AD. You there you go. A lot going on, by the way, for SEC fans tonight, not just that SoCar Mississippi State game. Arkansas is in action on ESPN. Tennessee. On ABC against Virginia Tech tonight. Auburn on the SEC Network and LSU on the U this evening. A couple of bounces. Did Alabama touch that? Did Trayvon Diggs get out of the way in time? And apparently he did. 45 yards on that punt. And speaking of that Tennessee-Virginia Tech game, also known as the pilot flying J battle at Bristol, that's Houchin Smith Stadium, which is where Western Kentucky plays. I think what we're planning to do here is show you how all the stadiums fit inside yeah. the Bristol Motor Speedway. That would include where Western Kentucky plays. Of course, here, Bryant-Denny Stadium, over 100,000. And there would be plenty of room for both stadiums and then about 40 or 50,000 more. And that's the, that looks like the shot from the press box where our colleagues will be calling it. So hopefully <laughs> they bring their binoculars out and they can go see uh, who's actually throwing, passing, running the football. Mm. Reese Davis might need a telescope <laughs> instead of the binoculars for the Pilot Plan and Jay Battle at Bristol tonight, 8 Eastern on ABC. It's going to be a fun environment. One of those games where, you know, Virginia Tech and Tennessee fans are going to be able to talk about, hey, 10 years ago, I was there when they played in Bristol. And I'll tell you what, lose, you know, that close call against uh, App State last week, Josh Dobbs was off as a quarterback. Their defense didn't show up. Tr fumbles everywhere. VTech had a win, and they fumbled all over the house, too. Justin Fuentes, their new coach. So, again, this is a, a big game, I think, for both teams in a stage where, gosh, 150,000 fans will be. It'll be pretty sweet. Blake Barnett now in a quarterback for the Tide. Foster is the motion man. They tried the direct snap to him, and he couldn't hang on. Western says they have it, and they do. Again, it's that read option mesh. Blake Barnett hasn't been in the game. He's going to try to fake it, and what happens is the, he doesn't let the motion go across the field. The center is snapping on him. Foster comes across, and the ball's coming through in the air. Again, you can't have those mistakes. Little things like that, waiting for the receiver to get across the line, raising your foot on time, when to snap the ball, you got to get dialed in. Right now, not a good operation to finish off this game. And now you've got a lot of pride uh, on the Alabama defensive side to not give up the touchdown here in the final minute and a half. And a short field for Western Kentucky. They want to score in Brian Denny. And it's broken up down near the goal line by Levi Wallace. Lucky Jackson was the intended receiver. Well, if they're going to hold them to a, a shutout as far as scoring offensively, the backups are going to have to do it. And this is going to be a, a nice deal for those guys, invaluable playing time for them where they're trying to find players, trying to find depth for this defense so that they can give a blow to Tim Williams, Ryan Anderson, and Jonathan Allen. Eccles out into the flat. And down inside the 25-yard line, the Marquez Trigg. Wallace again on the tackle. Trigg's a big back, 220 pounds. DB kind of squares him up and at least holds him off to the cavalry comes in. Then third and eight. Defense trying to hold him off here. I'd assume they go for it on fourth down, so see if they can make a stop. Throw to the end zone, caught for the touchdown. Western Kentucky gets in. And who else could it be but Lucky Jackson with the catch for six. And the first touchdown allowed here in the first couple of games for the Alabama defense. It goes 24 yards from Drew Eccles. Yeah, you know, the cover, the cover corner comes up. It looks like it was a cover two, and the safety isn't quite there. 
when That's he passes Diggs. it off. Playing both ways today. And I'll tell you, you know, finishing this game strong for Western Kentucky, obviously trying to get some momentum, something positive out of the game as they come out of here. Uh, you know, listen, 45 seconds left in the game. That'll be a positive for them as they score a touchdown. Extra point is good from Ryan Nuss. And a reminder that tonight coming up on ABC from Bristol Motor Speedway, it's the pilot flying Jay Battle at Bristol with 150,000 fans possibly on hand tonight to watch Virginia Tech and 17th ranked Tennessee. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC and also on your Watch ESPN app. So for Nick Saban and the Crimson Tide, well, there's, there's still some coaching going on from Coach Saban down there with 46 seconds left. He is hot under the collar that they gave up that touchdown. Oh, well, he's mad at Coach Kiffin because they had a fumble, and that's definitely... He doesn't like that play call selection because when you have moving parts, that has the potential of happening. Rather just hand it off, and then the coverage yeah. mistake on the back end on defense. Saul Diggs in that picture just before, wondering why he wasn't able to get across for, for safety help. So listen, this week is not going to be easy. I can imagine what the practices are going to be like, and they need to get dialed in. There's going to be a ton to teach and a ton to get after some of these guys with in this film after this game. Eventually here, the attention will turn to Ole Miss, a team that has beaten Alabama the last two years with Chad Kelly at quarterback, and Chad is back. They were taking care of business today against Wofford. Looks like they'll go into the meeting one and one. Let's go back to the last couple of seasons. 2014, the first time ever that Ole Miss had beaten a number one team in the country. Bo Wallace, three touchdowns, including two in the last six minutes. And then last year, the five costly turnovers for the Tide. And uh, the circus catch, Quincy Adeboijo, finishing it up 43-37. And the Land Sharks defense, a big part of that story for Ole Miss. So it's not easy to get back-to-back and -back multiple wins against Alabama. In fact, Saban stopped three such streaks in 2007. False start, number 78 offense. Fighter penalty, first down. To put a highlight tape here on watching Nick Saban as his team finishes the game. He's not happy, but, you know, you're right. And I'll say this, look, Ole Miss is going against a way different defense than the past. You know, I don't see the fireworks. I don't think they'll be able to pass the way they want to against this Alabama defense. And for Alabama, if they just clean up some of the mistakes, the penalties, some of the drop passes today, and if Jalen Hurts just a little quicker on his decision process, then you're talking about a much different turnout in this game. Three touchdown passes yeah. might turn into four, five, six. So, uh, again, a lot of learning, a lot of teaching tape, and I think this will be a uh, very good contested game. Uh, next week as both of these teams if they want to go where they want to go at the end of the season They're gonna have to take on each other be at their best and that'll do it The tide will improve to 2-0 and Western Kentucky to 1-1 and and the hope certainly in Bowling Green that uh, Mike White Is going to be okay their starting quarterback who had to leave the game uh, late in the third quarter Jalen Hurts emerging more playing time at quarterback, through for 287 yards and a couple of touchdowns. And uh, we heard again from Calvin Ridley, a big day for him. Got to clean it up. Execution again becomes the big target, and that's what's going to have to be done for Alabama to win. Coming up next, college football scoreboard presented by Honda. Now let's get you back to Chris in the studio.